I'm a warden sandworm, but an evil Enderblaze wants to destroy me. Watch as I get stronger, make new friends, and build an amazing base. Will I be able to survive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft, or will the Enderblaze destroy me forever? On day one, I spawned into the dunes as a warden sandworm. Wow, a sandworm in a dune. I've never heard of anything like that. Even if I am only a baby with 10 hearts, this is pretty cool. But things didn't stay pretty cool for long. They were about to get way too hot. A fireball blasted the ground next to me, almost turning me to ash. <laughs> oh man, that was hilarious. You're gonna be a fun plaything. I turned and saw an ender blaze floating through the air towards me. He looked so mysterious and powerful, and he certainly didn't look friendly. Welcome to the desert world. It didn't used to be a desert world, but I made some changes to it, just for fun, you know. Who, who are you? I'm Eddie, Eddie the Ender Blaze, and I'm here for a good time, which means that you're not gonna be here for a long time. Better start running, kid. My little friends are gonna wanna play with you too. Eddie the Ender Blaze disappeared, and afterwards, a small gang of Endermen appeared. You heard the boss, boys. Let's get them. I was worried that I was outmatched here, when suddenly, I realized a special power I had, the Warden Sonic Boom. I blasted the Sonic Boom at the Endermen and vaporized them instantly. Then I used my sandworm powers to tunnel down into the ground. Great, I've already made an arch enemy. This is gonna be a fun 100 days. On day two, I surfaced again, managing to escape my freaky ender pursuers. I was real hungry after all that, so it was time to hunt down some food. Lucky for me, it didn't take me long to find an apple tree, which I broke down and started eating the apples from. And the spare wood I took from the tree allowed me to make a wooden pickaxe, a perfect means to an end. I used the wooden pickaxe to dig up some stone, making myself a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. I mined a bunch more wood and sandstone, so I was able to start building myself a one-room base. This is pretty luxurious for a sandworm like me. But my construction noises caught the attention of one of the Endermen who'd been chasing me earlier. Uh, there you are. Let's battle, wormy boy. I'm proud to be a worm. You can't insult me like that. With all my wormy might, I ran over to the Enderman with my stone sword and battled him until he was no more. None of these Ender monsters are gonna keep me down. On day three, I left the dunes and went out to the desert, proving that every part of this world seemed to be drier than reading the dictionary while really, really sleepy. But while I was out in the arid expanse of the desert, I was suddenly attacked by a monstrous beast, a scary floating Endergast. Oh, so you're the sad little worm that Eddie was telling me about at the lab. Funny, I thought you'd be bigger. What a disappointment. Hey, that isn't nice. Wait, what was that about a lair? I've told you too much already. Hope you've got your affairs in order, worm boy, cause you're about to get roasted. He started shooting fireballs at me, not even giving me enough time to return fire with my sonic blast. All I could do was turn tail and excavate my way into the ground as fast as I could. But as I went deeper and deeper, I ended up running into a basalt snake who was already hiding underground. Hey, this is my hole. It was made for me. What are you doing down here? Sorry, I was just trying to escape from an evil creature. Oh, I see. An evil creature. I get how it is. The name's Betty. Nice to meet you. I'm Zozo. -so. Say, wanna come stay at my base? Us armless creatures have got to stick together. Sounds good, bro. Let's go. From day four to day five, I returned to my small base with Betty the Basalt Snake. Wow, Zozo. -so. What a huge base you have. But... Are the rooms all empty? Thank you for pointing that out, Betty. Thankfully, I've got the tools and the building skills to change that. I worked to build a small room for Betty to sleep in while staying at my base. Once that was done, she at least seemed pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with this. No problem. Guess the base isn't so small now. While Betty slithered into her room to get some sleep, I decided to have a look around the perimeter of my base, trying to assess what upgrade would be best to build next. Hmm, maybe a pool would be nice. But I didn't need to think for long because Suddenly, the floor broke next to me, and an Enderman teleported in front of me. Waha! It is I, a random Enderman! If you think you can defeat me, think again! Because I'll... I destroyed him with one of my sonic blasts, 
easily taking care of the problem. But I noticed that after being destroyed, the Enderman had dropped a new tool, a hammer and excavator, a tool that can break a three by three block area. Oh wow, this is gonna make me an even better tunneler. From day six to day eight, I was slithering through the desert again, looking for more interesting loot I could gather up. Sadly, I didn't find much. I just went back to my base, feeling warmly sorry for myself. This place looks so drab. It's majorly bumming me out. Wait, I know, some banners would make this place look great. But to get banners, I needed wool. And to get wool, I needed sheep. That's why I slithered through the dunes until I found myself some hardy desert sheep. Because sheep, like most people, are fascinated by worms and find them to be wonderful and interesting creatures. So they followed me back to my base. Then I built a pen to keep them in. Once they'd grown their wool out a little, I'd be able to shear them and make some awesome banners. I wonder if I can find some more sheep out there. The more banners, the better, after all. I slithered back out into the dunes. I searched for a few hours when suddenly a fireball came blasting at me. I narrowly dodged, saving my wormy skin, but I knew that if it hit me, I'd be doomed. When the dust cleared, I turned and saw Eddie the Enderblaze floating next to me. <laughs> you should have seen your goofy little worm face. You were like, ooh, oh no, I'm gonna die. <laughs> That's what you said. I never said that. Who's gonna believe you? I'm the ultimate authority here, and that's why I'm gonna use all my epic cosmic power to have some fun. But your idea of fun is trying to destroy people. Yeah, nice to know you're finally getting it. Say, let's play a new game. This one is called Burn Zozo Burn. He started hurling powerful fireballs at me, so all I could do is turn and run for the hills, or rather, the dunes. It's not gonna be easy for a lowly worm like me to defeat a being that powerful. I need to get stronger. From day nine to day 10, I was feeling pretty discouraged after my run-in with Eddie. I have so much work to do if I wanna get stronger, and I don't even know where to start. Hey, don't look so down. It'll be okay, Zozo. It's not gonna be easy. See, but I think you can do it. Hey, guess what? I started working on a statue to spruce up the base. Since it was looking pretty dull, no offense, go take a peek. It's not finished yet, but it'll be a surprise. Oh, I do like surprises, as long as they're good. Thanks, Betty. I walked out to the back of the base, and sure enough, there were the beginnings of a statue. Wow, this looks awesome. I can't wait to see what it is. Can you tell yet? Leave a guess in the comments if you know what the statue is gonna be. Who are you talking to? Don't worry about it. What's up? I'm the best roommate in the world because I just added another upgrade to the base. Come take a look. I followed her to a storage room, a training room, and a furnace. Wow, this all looks amazing. Thank you so much, Betty. It's my pleasure, Zozo. From day 11 to day 12, I had the strangest dream. In it, I saw the desert world, but it wasn't a desert. It was lush and green, covered with lakes and rivers and leafy trees. Then, Eddie the Enderblaze came stomping into town. He blasted the landscape with fireballs, burning trees to ash, and drying up the water. Now this is more like it. If I had it my way, everywhere would be a desert. Who cares about water and snow and green plants? Yuck! That's no fun. Hey, I've got an idea. What if I burn the whole overworld down and make it my desert playground? I bet it'll only take me 100 days to do it. Then I woke up. Oh geez, what a weird dream. But I get the feeling it was real, which means after 100 days are up, the overworld is gonna be turned into a desert. I can't let that happen. This isn't just about me saving myself, it's about saving everything. From day 13 to day 15, I traveled back out into the desert. I was just starting to take in the scenery when I spotted that ender gas from before, floating through the air with a nasty attitude. Oh hey, the sad little worm came back. Ready to get your butt kicked? Do worms even have butts? I'm not even sure, but it doesn't matter. You're not gonna kick any part of me. I don't have to take talk like that from some tiny loser worm. Maybe a fireball sandwich will shut you up. He started shooting fireballs at me, but I managed to dodge them this time, firing back with some sonic blasts. Unlike last time, I actually landed a hit, knocking him back. 
While he was recovering, I rushed at him and attacked again, finally defeating the Endergast once and for all. Tell the boys at the lair that you lost to a worm. Oh, wait, you can't. Oh, well, that was awesome. You know what? I feel stronger already. My heart's increased to 30, and I felt tough enough to break through a wall. So I tried it out, and what do you know? I did it. I guess I can break through walls now. This day gets better and better. From day 16 to day 19, I decided to upgrade my gear to match my newfound strength. I found a mining cavern and ventured inside to look for materials. Oh, a vein of iron. I need to get some of that. I was about to dig up the iron when an ender creeper jumped out of the shadows and attacked me. Hey, I don't have time for this. I've got a mine. Luckily, he wasn't too strong and I managed to defeat him right away. Next, I dug up the iron and took it back to my base. There, I got to put Betty's furnace to good use and smelt it into ore. I crafted a nice new iron sword and pickaxe. Check me out. Out. I'm not just a little desert worm anymore. I'm a worm with an iron sword. That's pretty cool. From day 20 to day 22, I was hanging out around the base, trying out my new sword, when Betty came slithering up to me with a really worried look on her face. What's going on, Betty? It's Eddie the Everblaze. I just spotted him on his way here to attack the base. Oh no, not after all the hard work you did. I've got to go stop him. I ran out of the base as fast as I could until I could see Eddie the Enderblaze floating toward the base. You need to leave. You're not welcome here. Oh yeah? What are you gonna do? Fight me about it? Please. Yeah, right. You know what? I am gonna fight you. Yeah, your funeral. While he was gloating, I drew my sword and charged. He countered with a fireball, but I managed to dodge it and almost get in a good hit. But then he floated out of my way at the last minute, getting away. Still, I held my own a lot better than I did before. This isn't worth it. I'm out of here, but I'll be back with some of my buddies. You can count on that. We'll mess you up, little worm. He floated out of sight, leaving me alone and my base unattacked. I may not have beaten him yet, but that felt pretty good. If I can hold my own like that now, I know I can get strong enough to beat him for real. From day 23 to day 26, I was inspecting the area around my base and making sure it all checked out when I spotted a hat lying on the ground. Oh look, a fedora. This will make me look so much cooler. I put it on and I was right. The hat made me look super cool and like a guy capable of saving the overworld from desertification. Subscribe? Is that a word? I don't know, but it sounds like one. I know my name is a word though, Zozo. Which reminds me, you can find more of my videos by searching Zio, Zio. From day 27 to day 31, Betty came to talk to me, beaming with excitement. Zozo, I finished the next part of the statue. Come take a look and tell me what you think. I followed her to the statue and I still couldn't tell what it was going to be, but it looked really good just the same. This is super impressive. Thanks, but don't you think it's missing something? Hmm, maybe. Oh, hey, do you think some pink terracotta would tie the whole thing together? Yes, that's it. You can find it in the Badlands. Can you get some for me? I'm pretty busy around here. Sure. I traveled out to the Badlands to search for the pink terracotta. Suddenly, an Enderman attacked me out of nowhere. Hey, are you the worm who put an end to random Enderman? That was my brother. I'm Tandem Enderman. I'm much stronger than my brother. You'll never defeat me. So anyway, I defeated him right away and continued my search for the pink terracotta. From day 32 to day 35, I continued exploring the Badlands. Come on, where can a sharply dressed worm get some pink terracotta around here? I was starting to get pretty frustrated, so I took a second to stand still still and take a deep breath. While I was calming down and clearing my mind, a phantom fox drifted toward me. Oh, hi. You're not a scary phantom, are you? Oh, no, I'm not scary. I'm just scared. You see, it's my friend. He's in trouble. Oh, no. In trouble is the worst place for a friend to be. What happened? We were just hanging out and being in a silly, goofy mood when all of a sudden this giant warden dragon swooped in and snatched him up. He carried him off that way. Can you help me save him? I'll do my best. From day 36 to day 39, I followed the phantom fox's directions toward her missing friend. I wound up outside of a cave. This definitely looks like the kind of place where a dragon would hang out. I guess I'll look inside. I could hear some distinctive voices. Hello, is there someone out there? Please help, I've been kidnapped. 
Silence, fool. If you keep making so much noise, I'll bite your head clean off. No way I was going to let that happen. I ran into the cave, sword drawn, and ready to fight. There, I saw the warden dragon. The phantom fox wasn't kidding. He was huge and scary, too. Let him go. Well, I was planning to eat nether serpent for dinner, but I wouldn't mind having some worm for dessert. How about instead of that, you just don't do that. <laughs> tempting offer, but no thanks. In fact, I think I'll have you as an appetizer instead. He roared and charged at me, but I had my sword ready. When he tried to snap me up in his jaws, I slashed at him with my sword, then followed it up with a sonic blast. From day 40 to day 43, I continued my fight against the Warden Dragon. He was big and mean, but I was smaller and faster, so I was able to get away and keep attacking. Finally, I managed to defeat the Warden Dragon. Behind him, I could see another serpent locked in a cage. You must be the Phantom Fox's friend. I'm Zozo. I'm here to rescue you. Did you find a key? I can't get out of here. I didn't, but luckily I'm pretty good at breaking through walls. Stand back. He did, and I broke through the wall of the cage, setting him free. Let's get out of here. Great idea. I don't want to spend another second in this cave. Together, the nether serpent and I ran out of there and traveled back to the phantom fox. Ned, I'm so glad you're okay. It's all thanks to this worm you found in this nazi hut. Thank you, both of you. I'm happy to help. Stay safe out there, you guys. From day 44 to day 49, I finally gathered some pink terracotta and carried it back to the base. Here you go, Betty. Thanks, Zozo. I'll get back to building right away. You're doing an amazing job. Well, let's see if you still think so when it's finished. I'm sure I will. I can't wait to see what it is. While Betty was continuing to build the statue, I decided to do some work on the base myself. I'm worried that Eddie the Enderblaze is going to come back and try to attack again. I should do something to keep us safe. <gasps> I know, I'll build a perimeter wall to keep him from getting too close. It took all day, but I was able to build a big strong wall all around the base. If Eddie decides to come back, it won't be so easy for him to get inside. After I finished the perimeter wall, I decided to go check on Betty and see how the statue was coming along. How'd the pink terracotta work out? I haven't gotten to it yet, but I made some proper progress. See for yourself. I think it looks super. It really does. What is it? Guess. Hmm, is it a statue of you? Nope, you'll see when it's done. Can't wait. From day 50 to day 53, I woke up to the sound of Betty yelling for me. Zozo, come quick. Eddie came back and he brought a whole bunch of Endermen with him. Oh no, is the wall keeping them out? For now, but they're breaking it down. Hurry. I jumped out of bed and ran out to the front of the base. Eddie, I told you before, you're not welcome here. The Enderman minions were trying to break down the wall, but I couldn't see Eddie the Enderblaze anywhere. Then I spotted him hanging way back and barking orders at his goons from afar. No one tells me what to do or where to go, worm. I go where I want, do what I want, and destroy whatever I want. When are you gonna get that? Never! Get him, boys. I'm getting bored of all this standing around. The Endermen attacked me, but they were no match. While I was fighting them off, I saw another one grab Betty and run off with her. Betty, no! It's gonna be so fun burning her to a crisp. Say bye-bye to your little friend. Eddie floated away, leaving me to finish my fight with the Enderman. He was stronger than Random or Tandem, but I still managed to defeat him. I feel stronger, like I'm not just some little worm anymore. I grew into a bigger worm, my heart's increasing to 50. I wonder if I have any new abilities. I ran at the wall, climbing up the side of it. I do, I can climb walls now. Okay, enough celebrating. I need to find Betty and save her. From day 54 to day 57, I fixed up the damage to the base, repairing the wall where Eddie's minions broke it down. Now it's back to how it was and ready for Betty to come home. Oh no, I almost forgot. I have to go rescue her. I'll need some advice on saving a kidnapped friend. And I think I know exactly who I can talk to. I traveled back to the Badlands and looked for the Phantom Fox. Hey, can you help me? After what you did for me and my friend, of course. What 
What's the matter? My snake friend, Betty, was kidnapped by some guys working for Eddie the Enderblaze. That jerk? He's terrible. I've heard he takes us prisoners to a hideout in the Mojave Desert where he and a bunch of other bad guys have some kind of lair. I bet he took her there. You'll need more than an iron sword to get in and out of there in one piece, though. Then I'd better find a way to upgrade my gear. And quick! Thank you for your help! Anytime! Good luck! I hope you find your friend! From day 58 to day 62, I traveled back to the mining cavern and climbed back down inside. Okay, I've got a mine like I've never mined before. If I want to get Betty back home safe, let's get to work. I was digging up some iron when I heard a low, threatening growl behind me. I spun around and saw a thorn wolf sneaking up on me. Not right now, I'm busy. But he didn't care. He jumped at me anyway, and I had to fight back and quickly defeat him before I could get back to work. Now that that's out of the way, let's see what I can find. Oh hey, diamonds! I gathered as many diamonds as I could find and took them back to my base. There, I used them to craft a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. This is much better than my old sword. Now I'll be able to defend myself and fight my way into that villain lair. From day 63 to day 66, I was feeling really worried about Betty. I walked around to the back of the base and took a look at her statue. I wish I could tell what it was. I promise, Betty, I'll rescue you from Eddie and the rest of those creeps. You'll be able to finish the statue and do whatever else you want to do. I practiced fighting with my new sword for a little and trained my aiming of my sonic boom until I felt ready to go rescue her. Okay, I can't put it off anymore. It's now or never. I've got to go try and get Betty back. But before I do, there's something I'm forgetting. Oh, I remember. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my adventures. Okay, that's everything I needed to do. Time to go to the Mojave Desert and perform a rescue mission. I'll see you soon, Betty. From day 67 to day 70, I traveled to the Mojave Desert in search of Eddie the Enderblaze's lair. Once I was there, it didn't take too long to spot it. I just had to look for the creepiest building around. Yeah, this looks like his kind of hangout. I bet Betty is locked up somewhere inside. I've got to get in there and rescue her before Eddie burns her to a crisp, like he said he would. At first, it looked like there was no one guarding the way and I could just march right in, but I should have known that wasn't the case. As soon as I tried to cross the threshold, an Enderman jumped out from behind the door and attacked me. Hey, you're the one that killed Random and Tandem. Oh, and I guess you're their other brother and you've got some kind of a rhyming name? Oh, my name's Carl, but I don't like hearing about my buddies losing to a worm. So trust me when I say you're gonna lose this fight. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're wrong about that one, pal. I drew my diamond sword and started swinging. The Enderman didn't last long once I fought back, and pretty soon the way into the lair was clear. Here I come, Betty. From day 71 to day 74, I explored some rooms of Eddie the Enderblaze's base, searching for Betty. I stumbled into a room and saw an unopened chest sitting inside. I bet there's some good stuff in there. You better believe there is. Not that you'll ever get to see it, pathetic little worm. I spun around and saw an ender gas floating menacingly toward me. Oh no, not this again. You better believe it, scared. No way, I ain't afraid of no ghost. Let's do this. I drew my sword and got ready for a fight. He lunged at me, but I dodged, climbing up the wall to get out of his way. Then I jumped back down, using the element of surprise to attack. Hey, no fair. Only our side is allowed to use tricks. No tricks here. I'm just faster than you. Can't catch me. Here I go. Oops, missed me again. Ugh, stay still so I can destroy you. Nah, I'm good. I think I'll do this instead. I climbed back up the wall onto the balcony and fired a sonic blast at the Endergast. Who you gonna call? Endergast Busters! That doesn't even make any sense! And then the fight was over! Time to check out what's in that chest. I opened it up and found a full set of diamond armor inside. Just as I finished putting it on, I could hear a commotion coming from the next room. Sounds like that's where the action is. I'd better check it out. From day 75 to day 78, following the sounds coming from inside, I approached the door, but it was locked. Luckily, my hammer can handle this. I broke through the wall and into the next room I found Betty, locked up in a cell. Betty, you're still okay. For now, I don't know how much longer I've got. That Ender Blaze is coming back soon. Then I'd better work fast and get you out of here before he gets back. I was letting Betty out of her cell when I heard Eddie the Ender Blaze burst through the door. Too late, I'm already back. 
Nothing gets past me, kid. Since you don't seem to be able to learn your lesson, I guess I'm gonna have to make it hurt. Or maybe I'll have to teach you a lesson. Yeah, nice try. But I take a lot of pride in refusing to learn anything from anybody else. Get out of here, Betty. I'll meet you back at home. See you soon, Zozo. Betty slithered out of there while Eddie the Enderblaze kept his attention on me. This talking stuff is so dull. Let's get to the part where I roast you to ashes instead. He shot a fireball at me, but I dodged it, climbing up the wall and out of the way. It came pretty close to hitting me though, and I could feel the heat as it whizzed by. That was a close one. Not close enough. He shot another fireball at me, but I jumped down from the wall, attacking with my sword. Wait, no, you don't get to do that. I always win. I guess not. It won't be until I burn this whole overworld down. This isn't overworm. He shot one more fireball at me and ran out of the room while I was busy getting out of the way. I'll get to finish this fight later. For now, I'd better get home and make sure Betty made it back okay. From day 79 to day 84, I ran back to my base. While I was traveling home, Eddie the Enderblaze retreated to a special secret hideout room. He pushed past the sign that said no losers allowed and locked himself inside. If Sozo won't respect my incredible power, then I'll just have to make him. This game isn't fun anymore, so I think it's time to change the rules. <laughs> he opened a chest and pulled out a potion, drinking every last drop. He began to change, going bigger and stronger. That's more like it. Wait until that little worm sees the new and improved Eddie. We'll have some real fun. <laughs> From day 85 to day 89, I made it back to my base. When I got there, Betty was waiting for me. Zozo, I'm so glad you're all right. I can't take care of this place by myself, you know. Plus, we're friends, and you'd miss me if I didn't come back. Sure, that too. I'm almost finished with the statue, by the way. Amazing, I'm so excited. First, take this. She gave me a book containing a Fire Aspect 2 enchantment. While she went off to finish the rest of the statue, I used the enchantment to enchant my sword. Now this sword is even more amazing than it was before. I'm on fire. Ha, but not really, that would hurt. Anyway, time to go see how it's going with Betty. I'm finished with the statue. Can you tell what it is now? I can, it's a giant sandworm. It looks just like me, only huge and heroic. You can be a hero too, Zozo. You just need to get hold of the potion of power. Oh great, where's that? Somewhere in the Badlands. From day 90 to day 94, I traveled to the Badlands in search of the potion of power. I wound up at a mysterious looking house and decided to take a look inside. This definitely looks like the kind of place where you'd hide a powerful potion. Let's see if I'm right. I looked around and found a chest. I bet it's in here. I just hope no one attacks me while I'm trying to open this chest. I believe that's my cue. An Enderman rushed out of a hiding place and attacked me while my guard was down, knocking me back. Oh no, I guess I jinxed myself. Also, I'm supposed to be guarding the potion of power. Oops, wasn't supposed to tell you it was here. My bad. Anyway, I'll get to the destroying you part now. But he didn't have the advantage anymore, now that I knew he was there. I drew my sword and fought back as hard as I could. Before too long, I defeated him. Now, let's see about that potion. I opened the chest and there it was. I'll take this with me and save it for the perfect moment. It's all starting to come together. And just in time too. The 100 days are almost up and there isn't much time left to stop Eddie from turning the entire overworld into a desert. From day 95 to day 97, I returned home to my base with the potion of power and a sense of confidence in the battle ahead. I'm feeling so much more prepared than I ever thought I would, but I still feel like I'm missing something. Just then, I heard a knock at my door. Who is it? It's Phoebe. Who? Oh, um, I'm the Phantom Fox. You helped save my friend from a dragon? Then I gave you advice on saving your friend from Eddie the Enderblaze? We've bonded over a lot of kidnapping stuff, now that I think about it. Right! I opened the door, and Phoebe the Phantom Fox was standing there, holding something in her hands. I brought you a present. I thought it might help you out when you face off against Eddie. Here you go. She handed me a full set of netherite arms. Armor. Phoebe, this is incredible. Thank you so much. What a nice gift. And I didn't even know your name. I'm sorry. It's okay. There was a lot going on before, and I forgot to introduce myself. Good luck with the fight. Have fun storming the castle. It's more of a lair than a castle, but thank you so much. I'll try my very best. 
On day 98, I was getting ready to finally set off toward the Mojave Desert and try to defeat Eddie the Enderblaze. To psych myself up, I took some time to look up at the statue that Betty built for me. It really was amazing. Oh, giant sandworm, I hope I can be as powerful as you look. I hope I can save the world and keep it from turning into nothing but desert. And I hope everyone watching remembers to search for more Zozo videos by typing in ZOZO and leave a comment about who you want to see next. On day 99, I traveled to the Mojave Desert. Finally, I reached Eddie the Enderblaze's lair. Okay, it's now or never. I think it's the perfect time for this potion of power. I grabbed the potion and drank it, feeling the power flow through me. I felt myself growing bigger and stronger, transforming into a sandworm as impressive and powerful as the statue that inspired me. My heart increased to 100, and I was so excited that I jumped into the air and landed on the ground with a smash, breaking a huge crater into the earth. Wow, that's an amazing new ability. Okay, enough messing around. Time to find Eddie and stop him. I ran into the base, looking for Eddie the Enderblaze. Come out and face me, Eddie. He came floating into view, and I noticed that he was much bigger than he was before. But luckily, so was I. Looks like you had a growth spurt, huh, little worm? You just couldn't resist copying me. Can't blame you. I'm pretty amazing, but you'll never be as tough as me. Ready to play my favorite game? Burn, Zozo! He blasted a fireball in my direction, but my netherite armor protected me. I countered with my sword, but he dodged. So I took things up a notch, jumping into the air and smashing the ground. That worked, and it knocked him off balance long enough for me to attack with my sword and actually hit. It's working! I smashed up the ground a few more times and landed more devastating hits on him. How are you doing this? I'm so much more powerful than you. You're just a loser little worm. I may be a worm, but I'm not a loser. I attacked again and landed one final blow, defeating Eddie the Enderblaze once and for all. I did it. I saved the overworld from turning into a desert. On day 100, I returned home to my base, feeling proud of myself. When I got there, I saw Betty and Phoebe waiting for me there. Hey guys, I did it. I defeated Eddie the Enderblaze. Now everyone is safe. That's fantastic. I knew you could do it. Thank you. I just wish I knew what to do now. After you beat the bad guy, what's next, you know? I have a suggestion. Let's have a party. Sounds great to me. I can show off my dance moves. Phoebe excitedly approached after that. Oh, I love dancing. What kind of dancers do you know? Well, I only really know one. The worm. On day one, I rose out of the ground as a baby warden skibbity toilet. Whoa, this is one of the weirdest creatures I've ever been. Still, six hearts, I better play it safe. Suddenly, a gorilla came rumbling towards me across the plains. Invader, invader, you're not meant to be here. That didn't sound like a welcome wagon, so I turned my porcelain tail and ran off at massive speeds. That just rang the alarm bell though. More gorillas came charging in, forming a dangerous chase party. I climbed further up the plateau, managing to lose the gorillas. But the chase exhausted me. I really spawned into the wrong area here. What's going on out here? I feel like there's something I'm forgetting, but ah, I can't remember what I forgot. Boom! The ground next to me exploded, and an even bigger, stronger gorilla crawled out of the hole. Freeze right there. You move one step, and I'll destroy you. Want to live? Follow me, or else. On day two, the big gorilla led me across the plateau. Whatever you think I did, I didn't do it, I swear. I'm a completely innocent warden skibbity toilet. Look, kid, I don't trust wardens, and I don't trust whatever a skibbity toilet is. Want this to go smoothly? All you've got to do is literally everything I say. Well, I guess that's a pretty compelling argument. He took me to some kind of outpost near the top of the plateau. Leading me through the complex, they eventually threw me into a dark, dingy cell in the back. You better behave, toilet boy, or you're going to get yourself flushed. Lucky for me, I wasn't alone in the cell. There was a squat little Mungus waiting in there for me. Hey, Mungus, I'm Zozo. What are you in here for? Somebody accused me of being an imposter, even though I'm not. It's a unique form of discrimination that we Munguses have to deal with. Oh, that's horrible. A similar thing happened to me. I don't even really know why I'm here. You're certainly not gonna find your memories here in some goofy gorilla prison. We've gotta get out of here. Do 
skibbity toilets have any special powers? I don't know, but wardens sure do. That's when I remembered how to warden tree and use it to bust on the wall of our cell. Mungus and I escaped, running off in different directions into the night. Now I can start working on getting my memories back and finding out why I'm really here. On day three, I continued wandering through the plateau, trying my best to avoid any angry gorillas who wouldn't be happy that I'd escaped. In the epic battle of gorilla versus toilet, I personally wouldn't bet on the toilet. But rather than a gorilla, I instead encountered some cows, which made me realize I'm soon gonna get hungry. Hungry. Using my high precision warden shrieks, I blasted one of the cows, then swooped in to take my fill of the delicious beef. Okay, that's something I know about myself now. I enjoy tasty meat, just have to cook it first. I heard a rattling behind me and turned. There was a gang of skeletons coming towards me. Oh no, skeletons don't have any meat on them at all. I'm doomed. With my warden shriek still recharging, I was defenseless and outnumbered. But before the skeletons could get me, a huge lightning bolt came down and destroyed them all. Oh my god. Gosh, what just happened? That's when I turned and saw him. The glorious sight of a tall man with a TV set for a head. He'd fired the lightning bolt and saved my life. Come with me if you want to not die. From day four to day five, I followed the TV man into the shattered glaciers, a freezing and treacherous biome. Man, anyone who lives here must be one tough cookie. I can feel my bones rattling inside my toilet. We arrived at an equally cool pad where the TV man must have lived. It was easily one of the hippest homes I'd ever seen. Thank you again for saving my life, TV man. I'm Zozo. What can I possibly do to repay you? The name's Ray, Cathode Ray. And it's no biggie. I save people all the time. I'm a hero. It's kind of my thing. That's awesome, Ray. Could I be a hero just like you? I don't know what exactly I am, so maybe a hero would be a cool thing to become. I've got it pretty covered, little toilet. But maybe with some training, you could have some potential. Training? Yes! I can move in with you and- uh, With me? No, 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 no. Little fella, Cathode Ray rolls alone. Here. Take these and go make yourself a place. We'll talk in a couple days. Cathode Ray, the TV man, gave me my first set of stone tools and a stone sword. I left his base and ventured further up the treacherous shattered glaciers. When I found some solid ground on top of a mountain, I was curious to find warped trees here as well. This must be a sign. They look blue just like me. This is it. This is the location for my base. I mined enough material to start building myself a pretty basic house with one bedroom and a furnace so I could finally cook these steaks. Nothing is better than a warm piece of steak. This place isn't much, but it's mine. Not for long, you stinky toilet. I turned and saw that one of the gorilla guards had somehow followed me here. He wasn't interested in conversation. He wanted to fight and I needed to defend myself. When he ran in, I blasted him with my warden shriek, then finished him off with my stone sword skills. That gave me enough XP to level up, becoming a bigger, more combat effective warden toilet with 14 hearts and an inbuilt fireball cannon. Oh yeah, now I'm looking fire. From day six to day eight, I was heading back to tell Cathode Ray about the new power I'd gained, but in the process, I ran into my old prison buddy, Mungus. Hey, Mungus, how have things been swinging for you? I didn't expect to see you out here. Been better, man. Everywhere I go, people keep thinking I'm an imposter. It's really starting to affect my self-esteem. That's terrible, Mungus. I wonder why people around here are so distrusting. I continued on to Cathode Ray and asked him the same question. It doesn't surprise me to hear that, Zozo. You know, there are a lot of folks out here who really can't be trusted. It's why my work as a hero is so incredibly valuable. How can I start doing valuable hero work, Ray? I can shoot fireballs now, and I want to prove myself. If you go to the Stony Peaks, you'll find a deadly yak who's been causing a lot of trouble for the locals. You may be perfectly suited to this job. Send a warden toilet to defeat a warden toilet, I always say. Of course, Ray. Thank you for this opportunity. I won't let you down. With my new mission, I set off across the glaciers towards the Stony Peaks. From day 9 to day 10, I first made my way out to the Stony Peaks. It was a terrain so harsh and unforgiving, it made the shattered glaciers seem downright cozy. I was constantly paranoid that with one wrong move, I'd fall over and get injured, or worse. But after carefully navigating the difficult slopes of the Stony Peaks, I saw the monstrous yak in the distance. I drew my sword and carefully approached. Time for a surprise attack. I shot a fireball at the vicious yak. It turned, ready to attack. Trainer, 
Perish for your treachery! I fought the creature with my sword, but it was really strong, knocking a bunch of hearts off of me. In the end, I shot another fireball at the monster, and it blew him off the edge of the cliff. He was gone, but it left me badly injured in the process. Oh no, I don't think I'm gonna make it out of here. But a friend of mine was about to come in clutch. That's right, Mungus had found me. Zozo, I heard someone was in trouble. I never knew it'd be you. Yeah, take this healing potion and some steaks. You look like you need it. I truly did. I took the potion and was healed. Thank you, Mungus. I really appreciate that. What are you doing out here? Something's going on, Zozo. Something big. Wanna come with me to help look into it all? I would. But first, I need to go tell my mentor about my victory here today. I'm on the up and up. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to Cathode Ray, excited to tell him about my victory against the diabolical Warden Toilet Spider. Well done, little toilet dude. You've proven that you've got the makings of a hero in you. Thank you, Ray. It's an honor to hear that from you. For your next step on the road to heroism, I have another challenge for you. Even deeper in the dark shadows of the Stony Peaks, I need you to find and destroy the Hell Rat. It's every bit as frightening as the name suggests. Sheesh, that sounds pretty scary. That it is, my friend. That it is. I recommend you upgrade your armor and weaponry. Good heroes don't take chances. Good advice, Ray. I scoured the shattered glacier until I found a deep mining cavern. I searched inside, getting deeper and deeper into the dark until I found a dusty old crate. Inside was exactly what I needed. Some pieces of iron armor, an iron sword, and an iron pickaxe. The miners must have left this behind when the place was abandoned. I didn't get to keep my new gear pristine for long because soon enough, the mine was crawling with gorilla guards. You never should have come here. But I wasn't as weak as I used to be. I held my own against the gorillas until they were forced to retreat. Nobody defeats a hero. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to the Stony Peaks with my new iron weapons and armor plating, ready to take on the terrifying Hell Rat. I searched high and low for the Hell Rat's nest, terrified that at any moment it might pop out and destroy me, just like Cathode Ray had told me. But when I eventually found a cute little hut, and inside, I was astonished to find the Hell Rat but it didn't seem threatening or scary at all. It seems like a pretty innocent, if slightly strange looking, rat. Hey, you don't seem particularly hellish. Why do they call you the hell rat? Oh, it's because I come from hell, the unincorporated community in Livingston County, Michigan. Oh, I suppose that does answer a lot, but not why Cathode Ray sent me here. Sorry for bothering you, Mr. Rat. I could smell a rat, and it wasn't the hell rat. I needed to make my way back to the shattered glaciers with no time to waste. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to the cold, lonely world of the shattered glacier. Cathode Ray has some serious questions to answer. Sending me to hassle innocent rats from Michigan doesn't seem like something a hero would do. But when I arrived at Ray's pad, it was empty, not a soul in sight. Until I heard footsteps behind me, I panicked and turned around, only to see Mungus standing right behind me. Mungus, what are you doing? Here. I was just about to ask you the same thing. I've been tracking the imposter who's been causing trouble across the server, and whom everyone keeps blaming me for. All signs point to here. Here? That's that's impossible, but oh no, the hell rat! He's in danger! Before Mungus could ask any follow-up questions, I hightailed it out of the shattered glacier and made my way back to the stony peaks. When I arrived, I searched desperately for the place where I'd found the hell rat. But by the time I did, it was too late. Just cathode ray standing in an empty crater. Ray, what have you done? What you were too weak to do, apparently. You can't even stomp some silly rat. Why would I want to? He was innocent. Innocent is just a point of view. Who's innocent, really? I'm sure he did something at some point that made him deserve getting vaporized by me. If that's how you think, then you're not a hero at all. I am a hero, Zozo. And if you're against me, that can only mean you're a villain. Let me show you what I do to villains. Cathode Ray summoned up a huge lightning bolt, and before I could do anything, he fired it at me. And everything went black. From day 20 to day 22, I finally woke up, my damaged toilet body lying among the broken stone of the peaks around me. Somehow, I'd survived. Why didn't Cathode Ray completely destroy me? Because I stopped him. I turned and saw my old prison friend, Mungus, walking towards me. What? You're the first person who believed in me. You think I'd let that TV-headed creep destroy you? No way. I can't believe he used me like that. I thought he was a hero. I thought I was a hero. You still can be, Zozo. Let's go back to your base. Together, 
I think we can defeat this guy and show the world who he really is. You're right, Mungus. It's the only way. We went back to my base, and we tore down the old base so we had enough space for the new build. I mined up enough raw materials to construct a new building with a room for Mungus to stay in, complete with a bed and couch. You can't really tell what this place will be, so make sure to watch a bit longer to find out as I will finish the base. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the Savannah Plateau, wanting to see everything with a fresh perspective. Everything with Cathode Ray has got me reconsidering my whole life. But I didn't have time to brood. I saw an undead ostrich getting chased around by a terrifying dark manacore. This looks like a situation where I can prove myself as a real hero. I stormed in, blasting fireballs and warning shrieks at the dark manacore while the undead ostrich was out of the picture. It didn't take long for the manacore to relent, and I finished it off with my iron sword. Afterwards, the undead ostrich came out of hiding and approached me. You saved my life! That was so heroic! Thank you! I'm trying my best, despite not having a great teacher. Your best saved me! So in exchange, here, take some of my power and ascend to greater heights! The ostrich fired an energy blast at me, and I felt myself getting bigger and stronger! Soon enough, I had 26 hearts and a new ability, Smash! I tested it out, smashing a huge crazy crater into the ground! Okay, this will be useful later! From day 27 to day 31, while heading back across the Savannah Plateau towards the Shattered Glacier, I encountered a group of chickens. Mmm, even a warden skibbity toilet enjoys some nice fried chicken. I lured the chickens back into the Shattered Glacier and decided I needed to build a pen for them. Before I could do that, I decided to finish up the rest of the base so I can put them in just the right spot. I poured my heart and soul into it. I just hope no one flushes it down. I can't deny the resemblance is uncanny. If you think it looks good, make sure to subscribe so you can see my other amazing videos. As I was taking in the views, the Mungus approached me. Great work, Zozo. Some chicken is exactly what we need. Also, speaking of food, I took the liberty of making us a pantry. We can store excess chicken there. I looked and saw the well-stocked pantry and fully equipped kitchen that Mungus had created. Good job to you too, Mungus. This base is coming along nicely now. Meanwhile, back in Cathode Ray's icy chill pad of evil, he was consulting with his most powerful henchman, the Speaker Head. So you see, Speaker Head. This Zozo needs to be destroyed for the greater good. We can't have a good world with that skibbity warden menace in it. Of course, Mr. Ray. Everybody wants to rule the world, but you're the only one who I trust to see it through. Then go out there and do what needs to be done. He's the only thing standing in the way of our plans. From day 32 to day 35, I returned once again to the Savannah Plateau. More specifically, I returned to the gorilla base where I'd first been imprisoned. If I thought these guys were evil while I thought Cathode Ray was good, then maybe I had the wrong idea all along. When I arrived at the gorilla base, the huge gorilla who'd first captured me appeared to stand guard. You've got some nerve coming back here, toilet. After everything you've done, I ought to destroy you right now. Wait, wait, I was misled. And I think you were misled too. I'm on your side. Let me speak to the boss gorilla. Hmm, the boss gorilla isn't actually a gorilla. Come with me. If you try anything funny, I'll hammer you into the ground like a tent peg. The big gorilla directed me inside. I followed his instructions down the hallway until I saw the strangest thing, a floating redstone cube. My goodness, who are you? Me? I am the Cube of Wisdom, the source of all good and righteous knowledge. And if you had spoken to me earlier, I could have told you that Cathode Ray, the TV man, was nothing but a sham. Yes, I'm sorry. I know that now. He's a villain who believes he's a hero, but I want to be a real hero. Together, between me, my friend Mungus, and you and your gorilla forces, we can take down this monster. That's the wisest thing you've said all day. Zozo. From day 36 to day 39, knowing the danger of the threats against me, I searched the shattered glacier yet again until I found another abandoned cave. I searched deep within until I found some more abandoned pieces of iron armor, which I quickly equipped. Using my smash power to bust through the stone further, I found a small vein of diamonds, which I mined with my iron pickaxe. Not enough to make anything yet, but these will come in real handy when I find more of them. I returned to my base with my spoils, where Mungus was waiting for me with good news. Zozo, I crafted some weapons for you while you were gone. Javelins, they should be super effective. Oh, that's awesome, Mungus. This will make me an even more formidable opponent at long range.
range. I left the edge of my base to practice my throwing skills with my new selection of javelins, when suddenly a gibbon approached. Be not afraid. Don't worry, I wasn't. Oh, okay, uh, okay, let's see, what, what was the message? Uh, oh, uh, I'm an envoy from the primate kingdom. My master, the cube, wishes to speak to you at a secure location in the Twilight Valley. You must journey there at once. It sounded like there was no time to delay. I turned tail and made my way in the direction of the Twilight Valley. From day 40 to day 43, I arrived in the spooky and mysterious Twilight Valley. Following the instructions given to me by the Gibbon, I found a small shack where the redstone cube of wisdom was waiting for me. What's up, Mr. Cube? Why so cloak and dagger? Is everything okay? There's an urgent matter that must be attended to, Zozo. My spies in Cathode Ray's inner circle tell me that he's dispatched one of his most dangerous agents. Speak ahead. What's so dangerous about him? He's a highly skilled and lethal warrior. He's absolutely loyal to Cathode Ray and his cause, and he absolutely hates skibbity toilets. I must leave now, Zozo, but stay safe. You are in grave danger. The redstone cube teleported away, leaving me alone in the Twilight Valley. Or so I thought. The shack exploded, and the speaker head was standing there, wielding a huge sword. There you are. Time to meet your doom, toilet. All for freedom and for pleasure. Without delay, I started firing my warden shrieks and fireballs at him. But there was no effect. He ran at me with his sword and devastated me with one strike. All I could do was turn and run for my life. I'll get you, Zozo. Nothing ever lasts forever. From day 44 to day 49, I was resting and recovering at my base from my encounter with Speakerhead. I was lucky to get out of there alive. Speakerhead wasn't planning on taking prisoners. He was every bit as terrifying as the Redstone Cube suggested, so it made sense that the Redstone Cube would appear next to me in my time of need. You weren't kidding, Cube. That Speakerhead guy is a real demon. Be that as it may, I believe I have a solution for you, Zozo. A weapon that may be capable of destroying that diabolical false hero once and for all. I'm all ears. A blowgun, an ancient tribal weapon wielded by a great warrior. It's said to have special powers when used by a true hero in the name of justice. That sounds perfect. Where can I get it? I'm not sure yet. You will need to seek out the information, return to the Stony Peaks, and seek out other wise creatures. They will give you the knowledge that you seek. From day 50 to day 53, I had fully recovered from the stress of my battle with Speakerhead. I ventured out into the Stony Peaks, wanting to find the wise creatures that the Redstone Cube had spoken of. I'm lucky I don't have any legs, or they'd be getting really tired right about now. When I'd reached the highest peaks of the Stony, well, peaks, I found a wise old spider pig waiting for me. Welcome, my son. I am the great spider pig, who sits at the center of the cosmic web of knowledge. I can answer but one question of every person. What is your question, Warden Toilet? I seek the power to defeat evil. Where can I find the legendary ancient blowgun? It will not be easy, my boy. The blowgun lies in the chamber of destiny, deep inside the Cynthian Torrids. It is guarded by a terrible beast. You will need to be incredibly strong to fight it. A terrible beast. Great. For a second there, I was worried this whole thing would be too easy. From day 54 to day 57, I returned to the Savannah Plateau, hoping to share everything I'd learned with the Redstone Cube. But on the way, I was intercepted by a familiar and terrifying foe, Speakerhead. Well, 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 if it isn't my least favorite warden toilet, Zozo. Speakerhead, what are you doing here? I've been listening to you all the way since the spider pig. My master wants me to collect intelligence on you and everything you're doing. But I won't even need that information if I destroy you right here. I threw some javelins at him and tried to hit him with my fireballs, but he was too strong. My turn. He pulled out a destroyer and with one whack, blasted a huge crater in the earth. I was lucky to have escaped with my life. Meanwhile, back at his base in the Shattered Glacier, Cathode Ray was receiving the information that Speakerhead had stolen. The Scythian Torrids. Interesting. Then it means the blowgun must be guarded by the High Reaver. Perhaps I'll let Zozo deal with that one. He could always use the practice.
From day 58 to day 62, I was at my base, having at least survived a second encounter with the speaker head. I need some kind of advantage. I can't afford to let him get the jump on me again. I might not be so lucky. I was pulled out of my pessimistic thoughts by Mungus, who strolled over to me with obvious excitement. Zozo, I've been working hard building things while you were gone. I added in a little yard, a bathroom, and a new crafting area, complete with a furnace. Oh, that's genius, Mungus. Just the thing I needed. If I want some new gear, I'm gonna need to forge it myself. With this in mind, I went back to the same mining cavern I'd visited before and dug even deeper into the darkness, using my smash power to go deeper a lot faster than I would with just a pickaxe. Eventually, I found an even richer vein of diamonds and harvested as many as I possibly could. Then, I took them back to the base and put Mungus's crafting room to good use. I forged myself a diamond sword, a diamond pickaxe, and a few pieces of diamond armor. Now I'm a force to be reckoned with! From day 63 to day 66, I heard a great crackling outside my base, like something of immense power had arrived. I walked outside the base and saw the redstone cube of wisdom waiting for me on my decorative toilet. Zozo, it is time. We must travel together to the edge of the shattered glacier. There, we can find the portal to the Scythian Torrids, where the sacred blowgun awaits the arrival of its prophesied user. That, Zozo is you. Then we have no time to waste. Lead the way. I followed the floating cube across the shattered glacier until eventually we reached the impressive looking portal stand. Something is wrong, Zuzu. The portal, it isn't active. Then what do we do? Keep searching. There must be some kind of key. Someone out there has it. We just need you to get our hands on it. Well, we don't have hands, but you get the idea. From day 67 to day 70, while waiting and planning my next steps on the toilet, I was visited by someone I hadn't had the best relationship with, the big gorilla. Zozo, you know I wouldn't come to you if I wasn't desperate, but some unknown force has been fighting my men in the Twilight Valley while we try to search for the key to the Cynthian Torrent. And I'm guessing you want me to come in there and fight it? Yeah, pretty much but you better not gloat about it. Cause I'm a nice guy, I didn't gloat. Just flushed the toilet and made a beeline for the Twilight Valley, where I saw what had been giving the gorilla so much trouble, a cosmically powerful Shiba Inu. Be gone, intruder! You will never get your hands on the key! Leave my valley! Wait, listen to me! If you use this key for evil, I will- Listen, I'm not here to do evil. I'm here to stop it. You said something about a key? Is it the key to the Scythian Torrids? Yes, the very same. I seek the blow gun from the Chamber of Destiny. For what purpose do you seek it? I wish to obtain the blowgun and use it to defeat the evil known as Cathode Ray. That is a noble goal. The key is yours. If you misuse it, I'll destroy you myself. Shiba Inu disappeared, leaving behind a magical looking key, which I immediately picked up. I'm one more step closer to completing my quest. From day 71 to day 74, I was returning to my base, excited to tell Mungus about the key. But I had bigger things on my mind. Speakerhead was back, and he was destroying my base. You're too late, Zozo. I know everything. You can't stop us now. I can tell you're a speakerhead even from a distance, because you're such an annoying loudmouth. Don't get mad, Zozo. Get even. If you're brave enough, I'll be waiting near Ray's pad. Come and get some, loser. Speaker had laughed and disappeared. Then, Mungus came out of hiding to speak to me. How did he cause this much damage, Mungus? He used his destroyer, an incredibly powerful weapon. Darn, that man has such a thorn in my side. It doesn't need to be all bad, Zozo. Maybe if you go and destroy Speakerhead, you'll get his destroyer. Then you can use it in the Cynthian Torrents to get the blowgun. That's a great idea, Mungus. But are you sure you'll be okay here alone? I can handle myself, Zozo. I'll rebuild the base while you're gone. Then it looks like we've got a plan. Little did I know, all of this was part of Cathode Ray's grand plan. Once he's dispatched dear Speakerhead, he'll be strong enough to enter the Scythian Torrids. Then the blowgun will be mine and nothing will be able to stop me. <laughs> From day 75 to day 78, I was preparing for the battle with Speakerhead when the redstone cube of wisdom came to impart some of his trademark wisdom. Fight hard out there, Zozo. We're all counting on you. Thanks, redstone cube. Is, is that it? And then he left. 
From day 79 to day 84, I wasted no time in charging to the dark depths of the Shattered Glacier. Speakerhead, you will face me in single combat. That was clearly enough to summon him, because Speakerhead immediately appeared. It was almost too perfect. Ready to be destroyed, Zozo? Well, clearly you are, since you're here. Please stop talking. I'd rather just fight. I charged at Speakerhead, wielding my diamond sword. Even with the aid of my powers, I was so hopelessly outmatched. Face it, Zozo. You're doomed. You can't beat me. That's when I suddenly felt a surge of energy coming up from the key the Shiba Inu gave me. The power to fight against evil. I evolved into a warden spider skibbity toilet. I was bigger, stronger, and suddenly had 100 hearts and the ability to shoot lasers. Speakerhead was so shocked. What? No, you can't do that. Seems like I can. Bye-bye, Speakerhead. With a supercharged blast of my laser, Laser attack, Speaker Head was destroyed once and for all. In his place was the Destroyer, which I picked up immediately. Just you and me now, Ray. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to the base with the Destroyer and the key. And with 100 hearts, I was finally ready to go to the Synthian Torrids. I'm ready to do this, Mungus. So glad, Zozo. And look, I repaired the base. I turned and saw that Mungus was true to his words. The base had been rebuilt. Everything was coming up roses. The one thing left to do is go claim the blowgun. Then we can defeat Cathode Ray and end all this horror. My heart filled with determination, I made my way towards the portal standing deep in the shattered glaciers and used my key to open it. Cynthian Torrids, here I come. I immediately felt the dark, dry heat of the Torrids on the other side. It was a sinister place filled with molten lava and strange unknown creatures. After hours of wandering, I found a large, distinct structure that must have been the Chamber of Destiny. There's the chamber. Let's go see the beast. I walked into the chamber, which was susceptibly quiet at first, until a huge, terrifying High Reaver leaped out. Oh, there's the beast. It took everything to be able to defeat the High Reaver. The blade of my diamond sword, my fireballs, my javelins, my laser eyes, and of course, the destroyer. It was a hard battle, and I lost plenty of hearts. But in the end, the High Reaver was defeated, and the blowgun was left on the ground. Cathode Ray, you've got a big storm coming. From day 90 to day 94, I left the Chamber of Destiny with the blowgun in hand. With this, I'd finally be able to destroy Cathoid Ray once and for all. But before I could find my way to the portal, I was hit by a lightning that completely paralyzed me from the neck down. The blowgun fell out onto the floor. Oh no, who could have done this? Unsurprisingly, Cathoid Ray emerged from the darkness. He had total power over me. So, it has come to this. You know, Zozo, we could have worked well together. Imagine the heroics we would have accomplished together. You've never done anything heroic in your life, Ray. You're just a villain who's lying to himself. You're going to regret this, Zozo. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. I'd destroy you right now. But I want you to live long enough to see my revenge play out in full. While I couldn't move, he built a stone cage around me, trapping me within. By the time I could move again, Cathode Ray was long gone. From day 95 to day 97, I tried different methods to bust down the walls of the prison that Cathode Ray had built around me. Out of all the power-ups, only the destroyer worked. But there was no time to waste. I needed to get back to the Savannah Plateau immediately and warn the Redstone Cube of Wisdom. When I was back in the overworld, I ran as fast fast as I could until I reached the plateau. But I wasn't fast enough. The gorilla outpost base had been left in ruins and all the gorillas were gone. All that was left was the heavily injured redstone cube of wisdom. Zozo, cathode ray went on a cathode rampage. He's cleaning house trying to destroy everyone he can. Oh no, this is all my fault. I gave him the blowgun, he'll be invincible. He has one weakness, Zozo. Because he has a TV for a head, he doesn't have a mouth. So he can't actually use the blowgun. Get it back, Zozo and use it to bring Ray's reign of terror to an end. The redstone cube passed away, leaving me alone on the cold and dusty plateau. On day 98, I made a beeline back to my base. I needed to warn Mungus so he didn't end up like the gorillas or the redstone cube of wisdom. When I saw the state of my base, I feared I was too late. Everything Mungus and I had worked on was destroyed. Cathode Ray had almost annihilated the base. Oh no, did he destroy Mungus just like he destroyed the redstone cube? To my immense relief, Mungus emerged from the rubble. Please, I'm a lot harder to destroy than that. 
Mungus, you're alive! Cathode Ray was so focused on angrily destroying our base that he didn't even notice me. That's one small relief, but Cathode Ray still has the blowgun. I can't defeat him without it. Don't worry, Zozo. I have a plan. Let's go to Ray's pad together. I've got my own score to settle. You distract him, I'll steal back the blowgun. Then you can finish him off once and for all. Sounds like a plan to me, Mungus. On day 99, Mungus and I ventured deep into the shattered glacier to execute our cunning plan. We arrived outside Cathode Raid's pad and shared some final encouraging words. You can do this, Mungus. I'll keep his attention on me. See you on the other side, buddy. Mungus snuck into the base. When he was gone, I shot my fireballs at Cathode Ray's base. He immediately stormed outside. Revenge, then. I figured you'd come out here after you saw what I did to your base and your worthless friends. At least now I can finish you once and for all. Yeah, you can do that, Ray. But you'll need to catch me first. I ran as fast as I could as Cathode Ray chased me, shooting lightning after me. I ran until I'd lost him, then made a beeline back to the base. I met Mungus outside Ray's pad. He gave me the blowgun. Finish this, Zozo. And with that, he fled into the forest, leaving me alone at Ray's pad. On day 100, I used my fireballs and laser beams to wreak destruction on Cathode Ray's base. I blew up walls and annihilated rooms, and with the destroyer, I smashed a huge crater into the ground. And using my own smash ability, I annihilated everything I could, sending his whole kingdom crashing down around me. I'm gonna do what you did to me, and to the Redstone Cube, and all those gorillas. I'll leave you with nothing. All the noise attracted Cathode Ray himself, who stormed in, ready to fight, wielding a massive sword. You worthless little bidet. My perfect pad. How could you ruin it like this? I am a hero. How many times do I need to tell you there's nothing heroic about you? You're just a big, cruel bully who wants people to like him. And it's clear you're not going to like me, so I may as well destroy you, your villain. The battle began. Cathode Ray was strong, but now I was ready to face him. I threw in javelins and blasted fireballs. I hit him with laser beams and warden streaks and even whacked him with the destroyer. No, this is impossible. For the finishing blow, I pulled out my blowgun, channeling all the power of the redstone cube. With one blast, the scourge of Cathode Ray was finally destroyed. The only hero here is me. On day one, I spawned in as an awesome warden ninja, right in the middle of my warden ninja hideout. But there were no other warden ninjas around. In fact, the whole place was full of dread ghouls. While several of them were standing at attention, one of them was standing back and giving orders. Destroy everything, my dark warriors. We are under orders to eliminate every last warden ninja we can find. I didn't understand why this was happening, but I wasn't going to take it lying down. Who's giving you these orders, you cowardly dread ghoul? That's when I heard booming footsteps behind me. I turned and saw a huge dark figure approaching me. I was only a tiny warden ninja, and I didn't have any weapons yet, so he terrified me. I gave the orders. I am Shogun Skull, the ruler of this land. And all who defy me will be destroyed, including you. Shogun Skull pulled out a huge katana. He looked like he meant business. I needed to activate my special power, Ultimate Stealth. I practically turned invisible, immediately causing Shogun Skull and his dread ghouls to lose my trace. Where did he go? He's using his ninja abilities to run away like a coward. No matter, we'll find and destroy him another day. As much as I was ashamed to admit it, all I could do was run. I got out of there and ran out into the alien fields, looking for some food to satisfy my hunger. I managed to find some baked potatoes, but they were being guarded by a band of three brigands. Excuse me, brigands, would you be able to give me one of your baked potatoes? I'm really hungry. Would love to, man, love to. But here's the thing, they're all mine, and I want them all. So that's gonna be a no. The brigands attacked me, even though I was unarmed, and I needed to fight back. Luckily, my unarmed attacks actually did a lot of damage, and soon I defeated all three of them. That must be my ninja martial arts training kicking in. There's hope for me yet. On day two, after eating some of those baked potatoes and storing the rest, I left the alien fields for the ebony woods, looking for the right place to build a base. The ebony woods are dark and mysterious, perfect for a secretive warden ninja. 
I used my martial arts powers to start punching down a tree and gathered up the resources to make myself a crafting bench and used it to create a wooden pickaxe. Then I mined into the ground for some stone to make my first set of stone tools and a basic stone katana of my own. Now we're cooking with gas. I used my new tools to clear a tree and start building a new secretive ninja base. I did some mining underground because I wanted the base to be a secret, so most of it would need to be under the surface. It's a good start. I'll do more later, but first, I need to figure out what's going on around here and why Shogun Skull is putting a hit on Warden Ninja Heads. I went exploring around the Ebony Forest looking for clues until I found another gang of Dread Ghouls that Shogun Skull had sent after me. Big mistake, guys. This time, I'm armed. I pulled out my stone katana and made short work of the Dread Ghoul gang, leaving only one remaining. Tell me everything I need to know about Shogun Skull. You fool! Even me talking about him seals my doom. You should know. You are a key part of his... Boom! The last Dread Ghoul exploded! It must have been Shogun Skull's doing. He really was powerful. But what was he trying to say? I'm a key part of what? Better keep watching if you want to find out with me. On day three, I continued searching around the Ebony Forest. I needed some kind of lead, some kind of vital clue, before I could progress any further. That's when I happened upon a small hut in the middle of the woods, where a strange man was just sitting around. Hi, I'm Zozo. Who are you? I'm a nomad. Oh yeah? What does that mean? It means I used to wander around a lot, but since I got old and settled down, I don't do much traveling these days. What brings you to the Ebony Woods, Zozo? He gave me some mushroom stew, and I sat down to talk to him. Well, I'm a Warden Ninja, and I used to live in a big Warden Ninja hideout with others like me. But then, Shogun Skull attacked, and now I think I might be the only one left. Well, that doesn't surprise me. You know, things were once more peaceful across the land. There were dangerous creatures around, and sometimes a fight would happen, sure. But overall, we lived in harmony. Until one day, all of the leaders across the land suddenly disappeared, and the Shogun Skull rose up, taking on everything and everyone. He's the uncontested ruler now. But we can't just let that happen. What should we do, Nomad? It won't be easy, but your quest is simple, Zozo. You're going to destroy Shogun Skull. From day four to day five, I still had more questions about how the world got this way. I just didn't understand how one person could take over the whole world. Well, Zozo, you must understand that the Shogun didn't just win by sheer brute strength. In his Shogun's palace to the east, he made some valuable alliances with different groups. First, he made an alliance with the Dread Ghoul army, promising all the land and food they could want if they helped him rise to power. Then, he made a deal with the bandit warlord, the leader of the brigands. They could loot and pillage as they pleased, as long as they helped him crush his enemies. Dread ghouls and brigands started attacking any village or settlement they could find, crushing the opposition to Shogun Skull's rule. But the leaders? Nobody really knows how Shogun Skull got rid of them. He hired some other mysterious group to do his dirty work for him, but who they are has always remained a secret. In other words, to defeat Shogun Skull, there are a lot of other enemies you'll need to fight your way through first. From day six to day eight, I thanked the Nomad for all the information he gave me and decided to set off and return to my base. It was getting dark and I knew that all the mobs would be coming out soon. But on the way back to my base, I saw an innocent pink pixie cornered by a vicious feral squall golem. I needed to intervene. It's ninja time! Pulling out my stone katana, I ran in and fought the squall golem. He was much bigger and tougher than your average dread ghoul, but in the end, my stone blade and ninja training won out. The squall golem was defeated, and the pink pixie was grateful for me for saving her life. That was so heroic! Thank you! I majorly owe you for this one. It's no biggie. I'm Zozo, the warden ninja. Who are you? I'm Polly, the pink pixie. And is there any way I can help you with your quest? How about you come stay at my base for a while and we figure something out together? That sounds like a good idea. So Polly and I returned to my base. I continued mining underground and created a cool room for her to stay in. I'm pretty pleased with this. Good. Now I'm on a quest to defeat Shogun Skull. Do you have any idea what might be a good place to start? Well, Shogun Skull is one of the greatest warriors in the world. 
You're gonna need to train really hard if you want to get good enough to fight him directly. Maybe you should seek out some kind of ninja master to train you. That's an amazing idea, Polly! And so I had my next step, seeking out a ninja master to train me. And if you want to find out what happens next, keep watching until the end. Some big surprises are coming. From day 9 to day 10, I went to an underground cavern with my stone pickaxe to mine some iron for my next set of weapons, armor, and tools. I managed to gather up some iron ore when a huge hydra suddenly appeared in the cavern with me. There was no way I'd be able to fight such a powerful monster directly, so I activated my ultimate stealth and sneaked away to the exit. Sometimes the best way to fight is to not fight at all. From day 11 to day 12, I took the iron back to my base. I created a furnace and smelted it into iron ingots, which I then used to make iron armor, some iron tools, and an iron katana. And with all my fancy new gear and weapons, me and Polly the Pink Pixie decided to journey out to a nearby bayou to look for more clues. After some exploring, we stopped for a minute to talk. So Polly, what do you know about Shogun Skull? I'm trying to collect all the information I can. I think it might help me in my quest. Well, in addition to his dread ghoul and brigand armies, I know he has an elite group. Three warriors spread out across the land who help enforce his will. Three elite warriors? Sounds like I better take care of them before I take on Shogun Skull himself. Who are these three warriors? There's the Gold Creeper, a walking weapon of mass destruction that people always fear is gonna blow up. Then there's the Fire Elemental, a powerful being with mastery over flame. And finally, there's the Crimson Wizard, a crafty and intelligent sorcerer who has mastered the mystic. Wow, sounds like I've got my work cut out for me then. Before I could ask any more questions, a bunch of monster mushrooms attacked us. Even with my iron katana, it wasn't easy to take them down. These mushrooms meant business. But when I did take them down, I transformed into a bigger, stronger warden ninja with 20 hearts. Whoa, this is awesome! Better stick around to see what I transform into next! That's rad, Zozo! But hey, maybe next time we should go somewhere a little drier. This bayou is just gross! From day 13 to day 15, Polly and I returned to my base. I decided to spruce it up a little, adding some plants and other decorative improvements, and actually decided to make myself a proper room. Just because it's a secret underground base doesn't mean it has to be drab and dreary. That's when I remembered what Polly had said to me. Maybe next time we should go somewhere a little drier. This bayou is just gross. And it hit me. What could be drier than the Mojave Desert? Maybe I'd have some luck finding someone there. After taking some time to rest, I went out to the Mojave Desert. It was just as dry and hot as I expected, but there didn't seem to be much going on. That's when I was attacked by the Desert Lord, the ruler of the desert. Because he was on his own home turf, he was even faster and stronger than a ninja, and it was too late for me to use ultimate stealth. I broke away from the fight and stood back, but the Desert Lord still seemed ready to battle. You are a trespasser on this land. This is my desert, and I'll never let you or the diabolical Shogun Skull you serve claim it. Wait, there's been a misunderstanding. I don't work for Shogun Skull. I want to defeat him. Oh, I'm sorry. I just assumed you was working for the Dread Shogun. But why? Didn't all the Warden Ninjas used to work for him? My mind was blown. It all made sense now. The mysterious third group who worked with the Shogun Skull, it must have been the Warden Ninjas. But why was he trying to destroy them now? Desert Lord, you've given me a lot to think over. Would you like to come back to my base and we can work together to defeat Shogun Skull? Well, I hate to leave my desert, my true home. For now, it seems working together is the most sensible choice. Let's go, Warden Ninja. The name's Zozo. Follow me! From day 16 to day 19, I returned to my base with the Desert Lord. I mined a new underground room for him, complete with a bed and even a few sandblocks, just to help him feel at home. It's not exactly the desert, but thank you, Zozo. This'll do. Seeing as how exploring had helped me discover plenty of interesting new things so far, I decided to continue visiting new locations, so I left my base once more. I went out to the prairie next to see what I could find. That's where I ran into a camel. Hey, Mr. Camel, I'm Zozo. Is there anything I can help you with? The name's Joe. And as a matter of fact, there is. For the longest time, I've wanted to build a nice beach house on the Rainbow Beach, but it's infested by wraiths now. If you could help me clean out those wraiths so I can build my beach house, I'll give you a weapon I've been holding on to for a while. Something you might find useful. That sounds like a good deal to me, Joe. 
From day 20 to day 22, I journeyed out to the Rainbow Beach to complete my mission for Joe the Camel. It was a really beautiful place. I can see why he wanted a beach house out here. When I ran into the group of wraiths he told me about, I drew my katana and charged in, slicing and dicing in a way that would make any warden ninja proud. Soon, they were all defeated. I'm getting the hang of this whole ninja thing. Then, I saw something quickly moving towards me and noticed it was the Gold Creeper, one of the elite Shogun Skull Warriors that Polly had told me about. Oh no, I gotta bounce. I didn't have any long-range weapons, so all I could do was run for my life as the Gold Creeper chased me. If it exploded while I was too close, I was doomed. But it kept chasing, getting closer and closer and closer. It started to get too close for comfort, so I jumped forward into some nearby water, hoping it would at least provide some protection. Boom! The Gold Creeper exploded. It was the biggest explosion I'd ever seen, taking a huge chunk out of the beach around me. But I'd survived. I'd completed Joe the Camel's quest, and I'd defeated one of Shogun Skull's three elite warriors. I'd call this a successful day. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the prairie and met with Joe the Camel again. He was pleased to find out I'd gotten rid of the wraiths, and less pleased to find out the Golden Creeper had blown a big hole into the Rainbow Beach. Still, a deal's a deal, kid, and you held up your end. You can take this set of throwing axes I have. Since you're a ninja, you'll probably benefit from some thrown weapons, perfect for those stealthy kinds of attacks. Wow, these will be so useful! Thanks, Joe! Don't mention it. If you need me, I'll be off constructing my beach house. With that quest taken care of, I decided to continue exploring the world. I reached the scenic Red Oak Forest, where I ran into a gang of mossy skeletons working for Shogun Skull. You're in some real trouble now. No bones about it. That was an awful pun. Eat axe. I tried out one of my new throwing axes on the first of the mossy skeletons, defeating him instantly. Then I pulled out my iron katana to deal with the rest. It didn't take long for me to defeat them, all except one, who I needed some information from. Tell me what Shogun Skull is planning. Ha! Yeah, you're deluding yourself if you think you can beat him. He just sent out the Armored Vindicator. If that thing gets you, you're doomed. Doomed! With a strike of my katana, I finished him off. That gave me enough XP to level up, getting bigger, jumping up to 30 hearts, and getting access to my Warden Sonic Boom ability. This will be useful for helping me take on that Armored Vindicator guy, if I ever even see him. From day 27 to day 31, I started making my way back to my base through the Ebony Forest. I was feeling pretty good about all my recent victories and the new abilities and weapons I'd gained. I'm actually feeling pretty unstoppable right now. And that's exactly when the Armored Vindicator hopped out and attacked me. He was just as big and scary as the mossy skeleton had implied, and he was wielding a menacing axe. Your journey is at an end, Warden Ninja. If you give up now, I can promise it'll be relatively painless. I'll never give up. I'm willing to fight you to the bitter end. Good. I was hoping you'd say that. The Armored Vindicator attacked once more. Every hit he gave me was shockingly damaging. Even with all my upgrades, I couldn't beat him at my current strength. Instead, I turned and ran back towards my base, narrowly managing to outrun and lose the Armored Vindicator. That would be a battle for another day. When I reached my base, the Desert Lord and Polly the Pink Pixie seemed impressed with my new size. Looks like that training is really paying off, Zozo. You're looking swole. It's true, just so much bigger and stronger than you used to be. And since you're here, I've also got something that I think you'd like. My research suggests that if you go to the Rose Fields and seek out the sergeant, he may be able to give you some information that'll help you with your quest. Wow, that's amazing news! Just be careful out there. I've heard that the sergeant isn't exactly the friendliest guy out there. With that in mind, I left my base and headed in the direction of the Rose Fields. From day 32 to day 35, following the Desert Lord's instructions, I went out to the Rose Fields. There, I saw the sergeant sitting down and meditating among the roses. I didn't expect it'd be so easy to find him. I approached the sergeant and called out to him. Excuse me, Mr. Sergeant. I've been told you have some interesting information. Could we talk about it? But the sergeant didn't seem like he wanted to talk. Instead, he got up, ran towards me, and started fighting me with his fists. I didn't even have time to reason with him. All I could do was fight back against his onslaught of punches. After I survived for long enough, the sergeant relaxed. He'd had his fun. 
Nice skills, kid. Sorry, what can I say? I like a good fight. What information did you want? I've been told you know a lot about Shogun Skull. I'm trying to defeat him. Ha, huh. Shogun Skull. I fought against his army back in the day. I was involved in a lot of those battles. What is it you want to know about him? I want to know what the Warden Ninjas had to do with his rise to power. And I want to know why he wants us all destroyed now. That much is simple. As part of Shogun Skull's takeover plans, he needed to destroy the leaders and guardians of the free people to demoralize them and break their spirits. While his armies fought their armies, he needed an elite group of assassins to take out the high-value targets. That's where the Warden Ninjas came in. They are excellent assassins, and with their stealth skills, they could sneak in and get the job done. And they did their job very, very well. But once their job was done and Shogun Skull was in power, he knew that if the Warden Ninjas could help him into power, they might also be able to topple his throne. So he sent out his armies of Dread Ghouls and Brigands to destroy every Warden Ninja. You, kid, are probably the last one left. From day 36 to day 39, I returned to my base. Knowing that I was public enemy number one for Shogun Skull made me realize I could really do with some better armor, so I asked Polly for ideas. I think the Shogun has a base in the tropical rainforest where you might be able to find some diamonds. Diamond armor and a diamond katana would be a huge help for you. Excellent idea, Polly. I'll go there now. I didn't waste any time getting to the tropical rainforest and beginning my search for the enemy base. On the way there, I ran into an air elemental that lives in the forest. Excuse me, kind sir. I have a quest I need help with. Some nasty dead worms have invaded my beautiful rainforest. If you see them, do me a kindness and perform a little pest control, would you? Of course. I'll definitely get rid of those dead worms if I see them. I kept searching until I struck gold. Well, not actual gold. I found the enemy base, guarded by a pair of dread ghouls, and it was time to fight my way inside. From day 40 to day 43, the fight began! First with the Dread Ghouls. That was an extremely quick battle. I pulled out my throwing axes and threw one at each of them, defeating them instantly. Then I ran into the base, ready for the real fight to begin. And it would definitely be a real fight, because the Armored Vindicator was in there, waiting for me! Finally, I can finish what I started and destroy you, Zozo. At least this time, you won't run away like a sad little coward like you did before. No, this time, I really am going to fight you with all I've got. The Armored Vindicator charged at me. I unleashed the Sonic Boom, stunning him. While he was stunned, I finished him off with my powerful ninja swing. I told you I'd beat you, Armored Vindicator. I'm a warden ninja of my word. With him gone, I searched around the room until I found a chest. Just like Polly the Pink Pixie had told me, there were diamonds inside. Looks like my armor and weapons are about to level up. From day 44 to day 49, I crafted my diamonds into a powerful diamond katana and even had some diamonds left over to make a full set of diamond armor. I'd hate to have to go against me using this bad boy. After that, I left the base with my new diamond katana in hand, looking forward to finding something to use it on. And as luck would have it, I happened upon a small gang of vicious dead worms. Hey, the air elemental told me to get rid of these. Time to kill two worms with one sword. Okay, a few more than two. With my diamond katana, I defeated all the dead worms with ease and destroyed the infestation. Not even the shogun himself could deny I was stronger than ever now. From day 50 to day 53, as I traveled further through the tropical rainforest, I came upon a cave that I sensed an unusual amount of power coming out of. This must have something to do with Shogun's skull. I should go investigate, just in case. But when I was about to enter the cave, a magical genie came floating out of it. Halt, traveler. You are approaching the cave of the fire elemental. If you wish to enter, then you need to answer my riddle. I remembered that the Fire Elemental was the second of the elite warriors working for Shogun Skull. I needed to answer the riddle, get in there, and defeat him. Okay, what's your riddle? I belong to you, but your friends use me more often. What am I? It was a challenging one. What do you think? Do you know the answer to the riddle? If you do, let me know down in the comments to help me out. Hmm, can you repeat the riddle? I belong to you, but your friends use me more often. What am I? That's tough. Hmm. <gasps> Wait, I've got it! 
You're my name. It belongs to me, but my friends use it more often when they talk to me. Correct. You may pass through. I entered the cave and saw the fire elemental waiting for me. He sent a few fire blasts my way, which I was luckily able to dodge. I fired a sonic boom at the fire elemental, then ran in with my diamond katana. With a few quick, decisive swipes, the fire elemental was destroyed. Two of Shogun Skull's three warriors were destroyed, and I was ready to level up. I got bigger, stronger, and my hearts grew to 40. I had also developed ninja speed, making me faster than ever before. I'm on the path to becoming a true ninja. I bet the Shogun is quivering in his boots. From day 54 to day 57, I was using my new ninja speed to zip through the forest. My powers were growing, but I needed some kind of way to hone my skills. Why can't I find the Ninja Master Mentor? I've searched everywhere and I still can't find him. Unless I've already found him and didn't even know. That's when it hit me. It was right under my nose from the very beginning. The nomad in his little hut in the ebony forest. The nomad who'd known a suspicious amount about what was going on in the world. I need to go back to the Nomad right now! So I sped right back to the small hut in the forest, only to see the Nomad outside again, waiting for me! I wondered when you'd be back, Zozo. Glad you finally figured it all out. So, are you ready to begin your training? From day 58 to day 62, the Nomad Master began his training. He said there would be three lessons. The first would be cutting down trees to practice my sword swings and to help me focus. If you can slice through a tree, then no enemy should pose a challenge to you. Next, he made me practice sword fighting with him. He was a tough opponent, but I could feel myself getting better as the sparring went on. And for the third lesson, he released a giant mummy scorpion and got it to chase me around until I finally built up the courage to defeat it with my diamond katana. Afterwards, I returned to the Nomad Master's hut. You have done well, Zozo, and proven you are worthy. I'll teach you my special technique, Ultimate Slash. Much stronger than a regular slash. Use it wisely. Thank you, Master. I will use it with honor. From day 63 to day 66, I returned to my base, only to see it under attack by a gang of dread ghouls straight from the Shogun's palace. Hey, get away from my base. I pulled out my diamond katana and ran in, taking them out with my ninja speed and ultimate slashes. It didn't take long for me to defeat them all, and that's when the Desert Lord ran up to me. Zozo, we need your help. Some of those dread ghouls kidnapped Polly, the pink pixie. We need to get her back. Oh no, where did they take her? Out into the ebony forest. You need to get after them, quickly. Don't worry, Desert Lord, I'm on it. From day 67 to day 70, I used my ninja speed to run back through the ebony forest, looking for the dread ghouls that kidnapped Polly. It didn't take long for me to find them. Don't worry, Polly. I'm coming to save you. Thanks to all my training, these dread ghouls weren't a challenge for me. I slashed through them with my diamond katana until only me and Polly remained. That was amazing, Zozo. Thank you. You saved my life from all those dread ghouls. I'm so sorry for ever letting you get kidnapped in the first place, Polly. Let's go back to the base. We returned to the base, and I decided that after all this, I needed to put in an extra line of defense building a defensive wall around the base's entrance. Better safe than sorry. I can't risk another attack while I'm away like that again. From day 71 to day 74, I wasn't sure where to go next. I knew that I needed to defeat the Crimson Wizard before I could take on Shogun Skull himself, but I wasn't sure where to find him. So instead, I decided to go back to one of the deadliest enemies I'd left behind before. With my new skills and my diamond katana, I returned to the underground cavern where I'd faced the Hydra before. As soon as I entered the cave, I blasted him with a powerful sonic boom, momentarily stunning him, and ran in with my ninja speed, hitting him with ultimate slash again and again, faster than he could even regenerate from it. Thankfully for both of us, the Hydra tapped out and agreed to tell me anything I wanted to know. You're looking for the Crimson Wizard, right? No worries, I know exactly where he is. You just need to go to the Weeping Witch Forest. He's guarded by some brigands. Just go after him and leave me alone, please. I left the Hydra to his own devices and ran off. I had a Crimson Wizard to defeat. From day 75 to day 78, I followed the advice given to me by the Hydra and traveled all the way to the Weeping Witch Forest. 
A place like this is a perfect hideout for an evil wizard. Why didn't I think of this sooner? I continued to go further in until I fell down a hill and found myself surrounded by brigands, just like the Hydra told me. You wandered right into our trap, Zozo. There's no way you're ever gonna escape us here. I don't wanna escape, brigand. You and your bosses are the ones I've come here for. With my ninja speed and my diamond katana, I zipped from brigand to brigand, taking out each one with a single strike. Once they were down, all that was left to do was hunt down the Crimson Wizard. But the last thing I expected was for him to come to me instead. The Crimson Wizard appeared right in front of me and fired an energy blast that took out a number of my hearts. It was clear that he was the strongest of the Shogun Skull's three elite warriors. This is hardly even a challenge. Why don't you show me your good time, Zozo? Have you come this far just to perish? How's this for a good time? While the Crimson Wizard was distracted by his own gloating, I ran in and struck him with my katana. Hitting him so hard and fast, he was immediately destroyed! Probably should have fully defeated me before you started bragging, Crimson Wizard. And this means that I've defeated all three of the Elite Warriors! And that clearly meant something, because I leveled up into my strongest form yet, with 60 hearts! It's time to finally defeat Shogun Skull! From day 79 to day 84, I returned to my base to give Polly the Pink Pixie and the Desert Lord the good news. They looked amazed at my size and abilities. This is incredible, Zozo! It's amazing to see how far you've come, Zozo! We're so proud of you! Thanks, guys! I think I'm ready to defeat Shogun Skull. Do you have any idea where I can find the Shogun's Palace? I can help you there, Zozo. I went there once. It's deep in the Zelkova Forest, and I can lead you there. Thank you, Desert Lord. Let's go! From day 85 to day 89, the Desert Lord and I traveled to the Far East into the Zelkova Forest. We stopped for a moment for one last discussion. Desert Lord, it'll be too dangerous from here. I'll go alone. Are you sure, Zozo? I don't want you to get hurt. It's okay. I've been training for almost 100 days. I believe I can do this. Okay, Zozo. I wish you luck. And with that, the Desert Lord and I went our separate ways. From day 90 to day 94, I traveled deeper into the Zelkova Forest, searching for the Shogun's palace. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Where could Shogun's skull be hiding? Right behind you. I turned around just in time to see Shogun Skull standing right behind me. Before I could fight back, he hit me and everything went black. When I woke up again, I was in the Badlands, miles away from where I was supposed to be, with Osiris standing right in front of me. You're not who I wanted to fight, but I guess you'll have to do. I still had my Diamond Katana, thankfully, and used Ultimate Slash on Osiris. He wasn't that hard to defeat, but knowing how far I was behind on my plans to defeat Shogun Skull now, I felt terrible. All I could do was make my way back to my base and figure out a new plan. This is gonna be a long week. From day 95 to day 97, I continued making my way back through the Badlands, frustrated that Shogun Skull and his minions had put me so far behind schedule. And speak of the devil, a gang of dread ghouls emerged from behind some rocks. It's over, Zozo. We're going to be the ones to take you down. Better mobs have tried and failed. I don't fancy your chances. I didn't have much time to waste on these guys, so I hit them with a sonic boom, then finished the rest of them off with a diamond katana. Shogun Skull, your end is near. On day 98, I returned to my base, exhausted from all the setbacks that had slowed me down and gotten in my way. I returned to find Polly the Pink Pixie and the Desert Lord waiting outside and looking equally sad for me. I'm so sorry that all of this happened, Zozo. You've been facing the impossible. Perhaps we put too much pressure on you. Maybe the Desert Lord is right, Zozo. It took a whole organization of warden ninjas to deliver Shogun's skull into power. Maybe it was just wishful thinking to believe that one warden ninja would be enough to overthrow him. Guys, we can't afford to think like that. We need hope if we were ever going to win this thing. Shogun Skull is throwing everything at us, and that's because he's scared. Because he knows, deep down, that I can defeat him. So let's keep pushing and prove that evil jerk right. That seemed to pep them both back up. And if you want to support our adventures and see more, be sure to hit like and subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss another Zozo video. 
Zozo, if you believe it's truly time for the final battle, I'll lead you to the Shogun's palace again. Let's bring his reign of terror to an end, once and for all. That's what I'm talking about. Lead the way, Desert Lord. I'm ready to do this. On day 99, following the Desert Lord through the Zelkova forest, I reached the Shogun's palace where we bid farewell. Of course, Shogun's skull was never gonna let me just waltz in. The gates opened, and first, he sent out a band of brigands to attack me. We've been promised a real good payday if we can destroy you, Zozo. That's money you'll never get to spend. I ran in with my diamond katana, supported by my now iron willpower. I'd never let these brigands defeat me. I kept fighting until not a single one of them was left, and only I was standing. Who's next, Shogun Skull? I can take anyone you throw at me. But the next group of mobs didn't come from the palace. They snuck up behind me. It was a gang of silent assassins. They were much tougher than the brigands, but with my expert diamond katana skills, I was able to still defeat them all. By this point, I was getting tired, but I still had the will to fight. Is that all you got, Shogun? The gates opened again and out stepped a huge warrior. It was the bandit warlord, the leader of the brigands who'd helped the Shogun rise to power all those years ago. Your army, Zozo. You've destroyed so many of my brigands. Do you have any idea how much effort it will take to replace them all? For that, I've decided I'm going to destroy you myself. Not if I have anything to say about it. I unleashed my sonic boom, blasting the bandit warlord right in the chest. But he tanked it. He was completely unharmed. Huh. <laughs> Pathetic. That barely tickled. Do you really think such a feeble attempt would really defeat me, the mighty bandit chief, second only to the Shogun himself? This is going to be fun. Worried that this could be the end, I pulled out one of my axes and threw it directly at the bandit warlord. To my surprise, it destroyed him instantly. Oh, I guess he was just bragging. Huh. With his guard force taken care of, all that was left was to enter the palace and battle the Shogun himself. On day 100, I entered the Shogun's palace and found the man himself, Shogun Skull, waiting for me. Well done, Zozo. You've proven yourself and fought with honor. For that, I will give you the privilege of a warrior's death. You deserve little else. All that bluster can't disguise how scared you are, Shogun Skull. I know the truth. You never would have gotten to where you are without people like me. And what the Warden Ninja gives, the Warden Ninja can take away. That's the true way of the ninja. How arrogant, Zozo. Do you really believe you can take away this? Shogun Skull began to transform into an even larger, more dangerous version of himself. The strongest I'd ever seen him. No more talking, Zozo. It ends now. Well, at least we can agree on that. The battle began. The two of us clashed katanas. We seemed equally matched in skill, but because of his dark magic, Shogun's skull was bigger and stronger. For a moment, I was worried it was over for me, when suddenly my warrior spirit kicked back in, and I found the will to fight again, and I also miraculously regained all of my health. I fought harder than I ever had before, hitting Shogun Skull again, and again, and again, until he was almost defeated. I'd never seen him look so weak and helpless. I charged up all of my strength, and with a single blast of my sonic boom, Shogun Skull was destroyed, and peace restored to the land once more. I love a happy ending. On day one, I spawned in as a baby dragon. Whoa, I'm no ordinary dragon. I'm a warden dragon. I opened my mouth and shot out some dragon breath and shot off a sonic boom. They were both pretty weak, but still cool. That's when I noticed a nearby ender dragon and warden. Huh? Hey, I have the same powers as you guys. You must be my parents. My mom and dad were excited to see me and everything was happy. But suddenly a big buff evil Steve came out of nowhere. What's this? A warden and a dragon combined? I already hate dragons, but a dragon combined with a warden is even worse. Run, Zozo. We'll hold him off. I wanted to help, but she was right. I was too weak. As I watched the battle, I saw that Buff Steve was able to destroy my dad. 
No! How can he be so powerful? Buff Steve then captured my mom. I had to hurry away. You get back over here or your mom will never be free. Don't worry about me. Run to a portal and destroy it behind you. I listened to my mother like any good boy should and ran away before Buff Steve could capture me. I ran into another portal to escape. On day two, I came teleporting through another portal, landing in the overworld. Wow. I turned and shot off my sonic boom, destroying the portal behind me. I don't know how much time that buys me, but I have to get stronger to save my mom. If I was going to save my mom, I had to get the gear to do it. Using my claws, I began gathering up some nearby materials in order to build a base. I don't need anything fancy yet, I just need something that can keep me safe. Speaking of being safe, I was suddenly attacked by a bear. Get back! I have claws too! But trying to win this fight was foolish. I had no choice but to run. Oh boy, it looks like the overworld is just as dangerous as the nether. I kept running until I found myself on a nice, steep mountain. If I hollow this place out, this could make for a perfect base. Excited with the idea, I got right to it, building my base. I have so many ideas of how I can improve it, but we'll start simple for now. Soon, the start of the base was ready. I feel like it's going pretty good so far. Tomorrow will bring me one step closer to saving my mom. On day three, I kept mining down into the mountain when I popped out on the other side. But as luck would have it, there was something unexpected. Huh? Is that an ender dragon nest? Wow. It looked like there was an egg inside of it too. Just then, a phantom appeared. He got closer to the egg. He was going to eat it. Oh, no, you don't. The dragons are my friends. The phantom clearly didn't expect anyone to be here, and I was able to hit him hard. In no time, I managed to take him out. Finally, it feels good not to run away for once. And what's this? The phantom had dropped some phantom skin, which I picked up. With it gone, I was able to get really close to the egg. That's when I saw there was a note nearby. My dear child, if you are reading this, then something has happened to me. I was setting out in search of food for us. It is very likely that a powerful being called Steve may come after us. He collects powerful creatures like us dragons. Take care and stay safe. Oh no, it's not just me. Dragons everywhere are in trouble. It's not enough to just save my mom from buff Steve. I'm going to have to defeat him. I quickly picked up the egg to take it back to my base. I could keep it safe there. On days four to five, I arrived back at my base. I got right to work building an incubator for the egg. If it was going to hatch safely, it needed a good environment to thrive in. Just as I finished up, I heard a noise outside. I ran out and saw even more phantoms. Oh man, you guys really want this egg. We'll just try and take it. The phantoms did their best to take me out, but they were no match for me. They would have to try harder than that if they wanted to win. With the two phantoms defeated, I picked up the phantom skin they had dropped. Oh, I know just what to make with this. I went over to my crafting table and used the phantom skin to make myself some phantom skin armor. It was about as strong as leather armor, but it would be better than nothing. On day six to eight, I was starting to get hungry and decided to go look for food. I was a little nervous about leaving the egg behind, but if I couldn't get food, then no one would be able to protect it. I soon came across a village. Hi there, please, do you have any food to spare? The villagers took one look at me and ran away. I guess they weren't used to meeting friendly dragons, or friendly wardens for that matter. Well, no one is around, so bon appetit. I got right to work attacking the animals around. Sure, it felt bad to hurt other animals, but hey, a dragon's gotta eat. And there's no way I was going to eat a salad. At last, I found you. I looked and saw Buff Steve standing there. This time he had on dragon armor. He was even stronger than before. You, what do you want? Isn't it obvious? You! He clearly wasn't in the mood to chat, and I had no choice but to fight. I started swinging, but it was clear he was too strong. Looks like you're all mine. I saw a window to escape, and I took it. I had to get out of there, and fast. Ah, uh, you might have slipped away this time, but mark my words, I'll find you. He was probably right, but today was not that day. On days 9 to 10, I had made it back to my base. That's when I heard a noise coming from the incubator. Huh? Oh no, the egg is in trouble! I ran into the room to find the egg was still there, but it was hatching. Suddenly, a small baby ender dragon climbed out. Wow. Are you... are you my mom? Who, huh? me? No, I'm Zozo. Oh, so where's my mom? 
Uh, I'm not sure, but she left this note in your nest. It was there when I found you, and then I brought you here to keep you safe. The little dragon read the note. I guess being able to read was a gift us dragons get at birth. I see. Hmm. I wish I could have just stayed in my egg. It's sad out here. Hey, it's okay. There's a lot of cool things to do in the world, too. Really? Like what? I thought about it for a moment, then told her to follow me. I instructed her to mine out a big room in the mountain because we were going to build a cool statue. I wanted to be sure we built it out of sight, though, so Buff Steve wouldn't be able to find our base. The little dragon seemed to really enjoy the creative process and was much happier as we finished the first part. This is a good start, but do you have any guesses as to what it's going to be? I then got to work building her a room to stay in. I knew how hard it was to get your mom taken away from you, so I wanted to be sure she was happy and comfortable. Soon, her room was completed too. On days 11 to 12, the little dragon came out of her room to chat. Hey Zozo, what's my name? Oh, I guess you were born yesterday and could probably use one of those. How about Siveth? Siveth? Yeah, that sounds cool. Oh, and Zozo? Yeah, Siveth? I'm hungry. Oh, right. Hang tight. I'll get both of us something to eat. I went out into the land to try and find some crows to eat. After a bit of searching, I spotted a few. As I got closer, though, I spotted a human nearby. Oh, no, it's Steve. I went to run away when they called out to me. Wait, little dragon. That's when I realized it wasn't buff Steve. I waited until they got a little closer. Hey, don't worry. I'm not here to hurt you like Steve. My name is Alex. What do you want? I want to help you. Steve and I used to be friends, but not anymore. What happened? Steve and I used to adventure together, along with our friend Brianna. One day we were exploring the nether and came across the nether dragon. The dragon didn't mind us being there until Brianna decided to mess with the dragon's eggs. There's something magical about them and Brianna got too close. The nether dragon destroyed her as the three of us tried to escape. I was sad, but Steve was angry. He vowed to take revenge on all dragons. He finds them and locks them away in his base as revenge. Through this, he has become stronger, but more evil, turning into what he is today. I feel like it's my responsibility to stop him. Thank you for sharing that with me. He captured my mom and my friend's mom. If we team up, we can stop him. Yes, I was thinking that as well. Although, I think it's important for me to keep searching for more dragons so I can warn them about Steve. But here, take this horn. If you ever need to talk to me, you can use this. I took the horn and thanked her for her help. Maybe we could defeat him after all. On days 13 to 15, I continued looking for food as I thought about everything Alex had told me. Oh no, it's that bear again. I have to fight him off. Otherwise, I might not be able to find more food for days. I was stronger now, so I charged in to fight. The bear was still really strong and really packed to punch. But everyone was counting on me. I couldn't lose. I kept swinging and finally took him out. What's this? I feel so much more powerful. Suddenly, I leveled up, growing in size and gaining more hearts. Whoa, I feel amazing. If I keep growing like this, maybe I can actually stop Buff Steve. I quickly gathered up the chickens and started leading them back to the base. On days 16 through 19, I arrived back at the base with the chickens. I got right to work building a coop for them to live in. Once the coop was complete, I went over to Siveth to tell her about the chickens and also Alex. This Alex sounds really nice, but I do have one question about everything you told me. What's that? Why are we eating eggs? Dragons come out of eggs too, so that seems kind of weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's different. Try not to think about it too much. I left Siveth to think about life and got to work building a mine. I might be able to grow in strength, but I can also build strength by making better armor and weapons. Speaking of which, I found some iron. Oh, perfect. I can finally get rid of my leather armor. This is great. Back in the base, I smelted down all of the iron, then used the iron to make myself a fresh set of armor and weapons. I'm feeling better already. On days 20 to 22, I woke up with a bad feeling in my stomach. I went to Siveth's room and saw she was missing. Siveth? Siveth, where are you? Just then, I heard another sound. It was the horn Alex had given me. She was calling me. I ran out of the base toward the sound. Maybe Alex knew what had happened to her. Soon, I saw Alex. What's going on? Zozo, I called for you as soon as I could. I caught sight of Steve. He was chasing a baby dragon. That's not your friend, right? I don't know. It might be. She wasn't in her room this morning. Oh no. I'm not strong enough to face Steve yet, but I'll tell you where you need to go. 
Alex explained where she saw them, and I hurried off. I soon got to the place Alex described and saw Steve was about to capture Siveth. I had to do something. Hold it right there, Steve. I jumped between the two of them. Ugh, out of my way. I hate dragons, and this one is no different. Wait, you're that warden dragon I saw earlier. You're the worst kind of dragon of all. Quick, Siveth, run! Steve wasn't paying attention, and Siveth was able to get away. Steve was then so distracted by her escaping that I was able to escape too. Hang on, you're not getting away this time. Steve chased after us, and I tried to knock him back while Siveth got away. He was still too strong, but I was able to get enough hits in to stop him from capturing us. Siveth managed to get away. Soon after, I was able to lose Steve in the trees. Siveth and I met back up, then hurried back to the base. On days 23 to 26, Siveth and I arrived back at the base. I was really worried about what had happened. I'm so sorry, Zozo. Are you mad at me? That depends. What happened? Did Steve find our base? No, I left to go and find more supplies to upgrade our stuff when Steve came out of nowhere and tried to grab me. So you don't need to be mad because he didn't find our base. I would have been worried if he found our base, but I'm mad that you left. You could have been captured and I would have never seen you again. I could tell Siveth felt really bad. Look, it's okay. I'm sorry for being mad. I know you were just trying to help, but right now it's too risky. Promise me you'll stay at the base from now on. Okay, I promise. But Zozo? Yeah? Before Steve popped out, I did see something interesting. I think you should go check it out. Siveth explained where I needed to go, and she was right. It did sound like a good place to go. Nice one, Siveth. I'll go take a look. After a bit, I arrived at the place she described. It was a large temple. I stepped inside and was immediately attacked by a bunch of husks. Oh, go drink some water, you dustheads. The husks did their best to bring me down, but I took them out first. After the last one had disappeared, I saw something interesting. Oh, and what might this be? I took a look and saw that there was a bone sword. Wow, this is cool. That's when I realized that the sword also gave me a special ability. Now I could spit spikes. Wow. Now that is awesome and mildly confusing. I tested it out, sending spikes shooting at the wall. As I hit the wall, murals started to appear. Just then, a mummy came out and attacked me. Oh, someone is jealous of my spit takes. I kept launching spit spikes at him, slowly wearing him down. He was not a fan, but it didn't matter because I had to survive this. Soon enough, he was gone. So what's up with these murals? I took a closer look and realized they told the story of an epic adventure. Wow. One you can watch if you search for my channel, Zozo, Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. This is when I survived 100 days as Moses. You'll really like that one if you're liking this one so far. On days 27 to 31, I had left the temple and arrived back at the base. As I entered my base, I could barely recognize Siveth. She was now the same size as me. Wow, Siveth, you're even stronger now. And I know just the way to celebrate. Siveth and I headed out to do some more work on the statue. Siveth felt like a little sister to me, and I was happy to have someone on my side. Together we could do anything. We were finishing up the next part of the statue when Siveth had a thought of her own to share. This is looking good, but something isn't quite right. Feels like it could use a different material? Hmm, I think you're right, and I know just what to get. I took off to grab the material I had in mind. I am a little bigger now. I wonder if I can fly. I gave it a shot and found that while I couldn't fly, I could glide. Well, that's better than nothing. I soon arrived at the bottom of the hole, but was soon attacked by straddlers. Out of my way, I've got a statue to save. The straddlers did their best to knock me down, but they were no match for me. With them out of the way, I quickly found what I was looking for. Wow. This amethyst is just what we need. I can't wait to see if it looks good on the statue. I mined up as much amethyst as I thought we'd need, then got ready to head back to the base. The statue is going to look amazing now. On days 32 to 35, I was on my way back to the base when I was attacked out of nowhere by piglins. What are you nosy oinkers doing out here? I fought them off using everything I had until the last of them were defeated. That's when I heard something nearby. Hey, were you hiding from the piglins? It's okay now. Ah, the dragon is talking to me. The villager was so scared and tried to get away from me. But just then, another piglin popped out and started chasing after him. Hey, watch out! I rushed over and took on the piglin. In no time, I was able to defeat him. You saved me? Wow, thanks. No problem. Where did all of these piglins come from anyway? I'm not sure, but my village is full of them. 
we could really use someone like you to come and clear them out for us. Would you be willing to help? Say no more. I'm on the case. On days 36 to 39, I followed the villager back to his village. As we got closer, I could see he was right. The village was full of piglins. Let's try to get a better view of what's going on. We snuck around the outside of the town to get a better viewpoint of what was happening. You see that structure in the middle of the town? That's where everyone is probably hiding out. Got it. Hang back. I'm going to rush in there and get everyone out. Whoa, hang on. I know you took those guys out back there, but those were just low-level scouts. You can't hope to take on all of those guys down there at once. Okay, so what do you suggest? It will be nighttime soon enough. I think we might be able to sneak in and get everyone out safely. I'm good with that plan. We'll give it a shot. On days 40 to 43, the villager and I waited for nightfall. Soon, we saw that the piglins had begun falling asleep. It was time to make our move. Let's do this. We snuck into the village, doing our best to keep quiet. Even the smallest of noises could wake up the piglins. Which, just then, there was a clang. My new villager friend accidentally bumped into something. Sorry. It was too late, though. The piglins were awake and not happy to see us. It looks like it's plan A after all. My new friend was right. These piglins were much stronger than the scouts I had fought outside the village. What he wasn't right about, though, was my ability to take them on. I was tough, and the piglins fell one by one as I took them out. Soon enough, they were all defeated. Zozo, you did it. We then went over to the scared villagers who weren't exactly happy to see me. Don't worry, everyone. He's a friend. I know dragons can be scary, but Zozo here was the one who rescued all of us. We owe him our lives. The villagers were happy to find out I wasn't there to eat them, and it felt good for people to see me as the hero. Thanks again, Zozo. And in the future, if there's anything we can do for you, just let us know. Will do. Now I've got a statue to go work on. On days 44 to 49, I returned to my base and got to work adding the amethyst to the statue. Sivith was right. This was just what it needed. All right, now we're making some good progress, but still have a ways to go. What do you think so far? All of the building and rescuing from the previous days had made me realize how badly I needed to be protecting myself from attack, so I made sure to do some work on the base. We were going to need strong defenses and traps if Steve ever found us. It had been a while since I had run into him, but I was sure something was going to happen with him soon. On days 50 to 53, I received a message from Alex. Steve and his goons were on the way to my base. How did they find us? All I know is that he was told something by a villager. A villager? After everything I did for that guy, he still didn't trust me. Oh, no, not the guy that was working with you. Just someone from his village. Still, it's a shame they would sell us out like that. Well, thanks for the warning. I'll go tell Sivith. I ran over to Sivith. Get ready, Sivith. They're coming for us, and we're going to be in for the fight of our lives. Meanwhile, outside the castle, Steve soon arrived with a gang of other players. Oh, Zozo, the jig is up. We're here for you and that little friend of yours. I don't care what you want. We didn't do anything to you. Let us live our lives in peace. Peace is not an option. Attack! Steve motioned for two of his soldiers to charge. As they got closer to the door, our trap started firing arrows, which quickly took them out. Urgh, you're smarter than you look, but there's plenty more where that came from. Next up came an archer, who did their best to try and disable our traps, shooting flaming arrows into them. Unfortunately, that seemed to do the trick, and the trap stopped working. Two griefers came up to the door, laid some TNT, and lit it. But suddenly, the traps came back to life, taking out the archer and trapping the griefers in. There was an explosion, which took them out, but also took out the traps and door. The base was open now, though, and the players started to run in, but not before falling into my pitfall trap. Another noob tried running in too, but fell right into the hole. Just then, someone vented in through the side and took a look in the hole. Unfortunately for them, their Spec Ops teammate popped in and knocked them down the hole. These guys really need to learn to work together. He filled in the hole, and the rest of the team charged in. Bring it on! The players charged at me while I did my best to fight them off. Leave us alone! We didn't do anything to you! Most of the players were pretty weak, but I could hear someone setting off explosions in the background. I had to hurry. I had defeated most of the players, when one stronger one with a flaming sword stepped up to fight. Look man, you don't want to mess with me. The players simply attacked. 
His flaming sword was really strong and kept setting me on fire. Yeah, okay, I see why people don't like Dragon's fire breath. Ouch! He was tough, but my attacks were getting the job done. I could tell he was getting weak, and I got him lined up with the edge. Have a good flight! I hit him hard, sending him flying over the edge. Just then, I felt the energy surge through me, and I grew into an even bigger dragon with more hearts. Yes, I feel amazing! Just then, I heard Siveth let out a cry. She was in trouble. I looked and saw she had been captured by Steve. Ha ha ha! Say goodbye to your little friend! Steve ran out of the base with Siveth in chains. I've got to stop him! I ran out of the base, but two more of Steve's players were waiting for me. They weren't very strong, but they gave Steve enough time to get away. I knocked them out, but it was too late. Oh, no. Hang on, Siveth. I'll find you! On days 54 to 57, I got out the horn and gave Alex a call. She arrived soon after. Zozo, you look so sad. What's wrong? They got Siveth. I've never felt so hopeless. Do you know where they might be taking her? I'm sorry, Zozo. I really wish I could help, but I have no idea where they could be going. I could tell Alex felt really bad, and she offered me some raw beef to cheer me up. Look, we'll find her. In the meantime, let's get this place fixed up. You won't be of any use to Siveth if they come back and capture you too. I agreed, and Alex and I got to work repairing the base. We had soon finished up the repairs, but I was still feeling a little bit down. One thing that I thought might help, though, was working on the statue. Alex offered to help on that as well, which made me grateful to have a friend in her. I was so worried about myself and my problems, I hadn't really thought much about what Alex was going through. Thanks for all of your help, Alex. I know you're going through a lot too, so it means a lot you are willing to help me. Anytime, Zozo. Now take care. I've got some things to take care of. I said goodbye and got ready for bed. Tomorrow I would figure out what I needed to do to save Siveth. On days 58 to 62, I headed into the mines. I didn't know where I needed to go to find Siveth, but I knew I needed to be stronger before I could do anything anyway. As I explored the mines, I was suddenly attacked by silverfish. Ah, these guys have always grossed me out. They were quick little buggers and hard to hit. Lucky for me though, I was able to take them out without taking too much damage. I continued into the mines and soon found some diamonds. Excellent, this is just what I need. I swung my pickaxe and gathered up lots of diamonds. I was going to have much better gear now. With all of my diamonds collected, I made my way back out of the mines. Back in my base, I got right to work crafting all of the diamond gear that I could. Steve wasn't going to know what hit him. On day 63 to 66, I woke up with a brilliant idea. I might not know where Steve is, but I know someone who might. And something tells me they are not going to be happy to see me. I took off towards the village I had saved days earlier. It was time to have a chat with the villager who ratted me out. As I arrived in the village, I saw my friend from earlier. I explained the situation to him, as well as who I was looking for. I'm sorry to hear it, but I can't say I'm surprised. Billiam has always been the village rat. I know just where you can find him. We headed off and found Billiam. Whoa, 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 you're uh, bigger than the last time we saw you. I am. I'm quite a bit stronger, too. I can break little villagers like you with no problem. Oh, wow, uh, yeah. Well, you're not gonna do that, are you? That's up to you. My home was attacked by Steve and his goons. My friend was taken prisoner. I can't forgive this, but I might be able to look past it if you tell me where I can find her. I I'm sorry, but I, I don't know where they might have taken her. Uh-oh, that's the wrong answer. I took a deep breath and got ready to blast him. Wait, I'm telling the truth. I don't know where they would have taken her, but I can tell you where to find Steve's messenger that I talked to. I thought about it and decided that was probably the best thing I was going to get from this guy. All right then, looks like today's your lucky day. William spilled everything he knew about where I could find this messenger. After he had told me everything, I headed out. Something tells me Billiam is not going to be very welcome in his village anymore. Sounds like that's in the best interest of everybody. On day 67 to 70, I arrived at the fortress that Billiam had told me about. I charged up to the base and immediately started attacking the guards. Where is your leader? Where is Siveth? The guards weren't interested in my questions and simply did their best to fight me off. But my friend was in danger and nothing was going to stop me. Out of my way, tin heads. As I fought my way through, I soon came across an even bigger guard. This guy was tougher than the first ones, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. 
He swung at me and did some serious damage. It really hurt. But I swung back and was able to take him out. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I had made it into the castle and more of the big guys were trying to take me down. They swung, I dodged, and knocked their blocks off. Hang on, Sivith, I'm coming! On day 71 to 74, I had officially made it into the fortress. It was as if the whole base had been alerted to my presence, as every bad guy in the place was swarming in on me. I don't care how many of you there are, I'm going to make it to the top. As I knocked guard after guard out of my way, I eventually found myself inside a library. Wait a second, what's this? I had found some kind of special item. With this, I have the strongest spike attack I can get. Excited with my new ability, I immediately put it to the test. There were some guards up on the balconies, and I managed to take them out. Oh yeah, whoever this guy is, he's in for a real surprise. On day 75 to 78, I made it to what looked like the lair of the castle's boss. You there, you must know where Steve is keeping his prisoners. Tell me, or else. Heh, <laughs> you really think I'm gonna help a dragon? Look at me. Steve has been stealing the power of the dragons to make us stronger, and there's no way you'll be able to defeat me. What? What does he hope to gain from all of this? Not only will he finally destroy all dragons, but he will become a powerful dragon himself. Then no one can stop us. Yeah? Well, this dragon isn't going to let that happen. Bring it on! The henchman and I started to fight. I did my best to fight him off, but since he had been given dragon powers, he was incredibly strong. This wasn't going to be a simple fight. Do you really think Steve will let you live your life once he's king? He's going to turn on anyone who has even a little bit of power. Silence! You don't know what you're talking about. But it doesn't matter, because you're going to lose. It looked like there was no talking sense into this guy. The fight was getting intense, but it was time to end it. I focused all of my energy, used all of my attacks, and at long last, I won! The henchman was nearly defeated. No! How could I lose to a measly dragon? Last chance, tell me where Steve's base is. Never! The henchman leapt forward to attack me, but I took him out instead. Well, maybe there's something around here that can help me out. On day 79 to 84, I started taking a look around the castle. Wait! What's this? Inside of a chest was a bunch of golden apples. Yes. Suddenly there was a sound outside. Huh? As I ran out to look, I could see Steve in the distance and he was looking right at me. Ah, uh, Zozo, just the one I was looking for. What do you want, Steve? Where's Sivith? Who? <laughs> Who cares? All you need to know is I finally finished my potion. The power of the dragons is finally mine. I received word you were here, so I thought I'd let you be the first one to see. Steve drank down a potion and suddenly started to change. He turned into a disfigured but powerful dragon. Steve, what have you done? Ha ha ha, here, let me show you up close. Steve took off into the air and flew toward me. I was strong, but not strong enough for this. I couldn't even fly yet. I had no choice but to run. Come on, Zozo, what's the problem? Afraid of a little fire? I kept running toward my base as Steve continued to chase me. I had to get to cover. We ran across the land and I finally snuck into my base. Steve flew around for a bit but realized he couldn't fit inside. After a while, he left. I fear for the worst with Sivith. Is she still alive? On days 85 to 89, I got out of bed after a sleepless night. I had no idea if Steve would be waiting for me outside, and I couldn't risk going out there. I went back over to my statue. I had planned on completing it with Sivith, but I was worried I might not have that chance. I worked on completing the final part. Well, it's all done. It reminds me of Sivith, and she would have been proud of what we did here. I only hope I can avenge her and save everyone else from Steve's insanity. I was feeling more confident than before and stepped over to the ledge. Maybe I was strong enough to fly. I leapt over the edge and sure enough, I was able to get my wings going and fly. Yes, finally! I took some time to get used to flying. Luckily, it looked like Steve had left the area. I was able to get some good practice in when I heard Alex sounding off on her horn. I flew toward the sound and saw Alex was waiting for me. Zozo, you did it! You're flying! This is great news! Thanks! I just wish I knew where Steve's base was. One way or another, I've got to end this. Well. I've got some good news for you. Huh? I found it. I couldn't believe it. Maybe now we could finally get revenge for all the wrongs Steve had done. Even though I was feeling stronger though, I was still worried about how we could defeat Steve. 
Steve is afraid of anything that might harm him, so he likes to keep that close to him. When we get to his base, we should take a look around. There might be something there that can help. On days 90 to 94, I flew to Steve's base. As I landed outside the base, I met up with Alex. Wait a second, huh? how did you beat me here? I was flying. Oh, I have another highway set up, so I can get around pretty quick. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So have you seen Steve? Not yet. I think you should be good to head inside. I'll wait out here and let you know if Steve shows up. Sounds like a plan. Stay safe. I took off and flew over the wall, landing in the courtyard. The place was full of half-dragon guards. Oh man, what happened to you guys? As I fought off the guards, I realized that these must have been Steve's failed dragon transformation experiments. That guy was twisted. Even though they were failed experiments, they were still really strong. I was able to hold them off, but I lost some pieces of my armor in the process. Whew, okay, that was tough. Let's move in deeper and see what we can find. On days 95 to 97, I moved even deeper into the base. Jeez, this place is huge. I soon found myself in what looked to be a forge room. I decided to take a look around and see if I could find anything that could help me in my fight. There was a cool dragon statue nearby. Wow. Then I noticed a chest was near it. I wonder what could be in here. I opened the chest and saw it was full of netherite gear. This just might give me the boost I need to win the fight. I kept on exploring when suddenly I was attacked by more of Steve's minions. How many of you guys are there? I smacked as many of them out of the way as I could. If there were guys down here, I must be getting close. I was finally going to be able to get my revenge. After I defeated the last of the minions, I came face to face with another one of Steve's stronger dragon guards. The last fight against one of you was hard. Let's hope this time can be better. We both sprang into action, hitting each other and firing off different attacks. He was still really strong, but my new equipment was doing its job. I managed to get him lined up with a cliff. Hang on to your horns! I gave him a good whack and sent him flying over the edge to his doom. Bet you wish you had the power to fly. On day 98, I moved even deeper into the base. It was starting to get really cold and wet. How deep underground had I gone? More guards? No problem. At this point, I was getting pretty good at fighting these guards. That's when I realized there was a dragon in a cage nearby. It was Sivith. I defeated the last of the guards, then hurried over to the cages. Hang on, I'll get you out. I used my sonic attack and opened up the cage, freeing my small friend. I was excited to see she was still alive, but had a question to ask her. I was scared to ask, but I had to know the answer. Sivith, I'm so happy you're alive. Have you by any chance seen my mother down here? A sad expression came over Sivith's face. I have, but unfortunately she's gone. We were only both here for a short while, but I believe she saved my life. What do you mean? When Steve came to extract her powers from her, she gave him even more power than she needed to. Huh? More power? Why would she do that? That just let him turn into a dragon sooner. It's true, but you have to understand that she was out of time, and Steve would have used my power next. He was going to figure the transformation out, but your mom sacrificed herself to be sure Steve wouldn't need to hurt me too. Wow, I understand. She was always looking out for others. She also told me that she believed in you, and she knew even if Steve was able to harness dragon powers, you would be able to defeat him. She told me to give this to you when you arrived. Sivith tossed something out on the ground. Warden's heart. Wow. This was a gift to my mom for my dad. I had always heard that there was a special power inside of it that combined the power of the dragon and the warden. But before I could investigate any further, I heard a noise from Alex's horn. Steve must be here. Come on, Sivith, let's get out of here. On day 99, Sivith and I arrived back outside of the base. Alex was waiting and we hurried over to her. Watch out, Steve is... Just then, Steve came smashing down into the courtyard in his dragon form. Sorry to break up the party, but you three have been getting on my nerves. It's over, Steve. You might look like a dragon, but you will never truly be one. It's time for you to pay for your crimes. Is that so? Well, come and get me, Warden. Warden? Zozo, use the Warden's heart. I quickly grabbed the Warden's heart and activated it. I felt an amazing amount of energy flow through me, and I leveled up into my strongest, most powerful form. Wow. I can feel the full power of the Ender Dragon and the Warden within me. You're going down, Steve. Steve let out a growl as we started to fight. We flew around, launching our dragon's breath at each other. The sound of our battle could be heard for miles. Give it up, Steve. I have the power of the two most powerful beings in the land. You can't hope to defeat me. 
You're just a freaky mix of two creatures. Hey man, look who's talking. I finally landed a powerful blow, which brought Steve down to his final heart. I soared high and dive-bombed him, delivering the final blow. Oh, uh, no! Steve started to explode as his head spun violently. His entire being was glitching out of existence. And stay out of our land! On day 100, Sivith, Alex, and I all made it back to our base. We had lost our families and close friends, but together we would be our own new family. And if anyone else was in trouble, we'd be here to help them out. On day 101, I was on top of the world, flying around the Alps as a fully grown Warden Dragon, one of the strongest creatures in the overworld. I've got all my special abilities and 100 hearts. It doesn't get much better than this. But while I was busy flying and celebrating, I didn't even notice that someone was standing on the Alps. It was a scary looking robot, and he was staring right at me with his big red eyes. Huh, I wonder who that is. Dragon detected. Deploy attack six. Depowering energy blast. Before I could even react, the robot shot me with an energy blast, and something terrible happened. I fell down to the ground, feeling myself getting smaller and weaker. My 100 hearts went back down to a measly 10, and almost all of my powers disappeared. And not just that, all of my equipment disappeared too. What? This is impossible. The robot came running over to me. Who are you? Why are you doing this? I am Dragon Slayer 3000. My primary directive is to destroy all dragons. Initiate Dragon Killer Blade. He pulled out a scary looking sword and charged towards me. Lucky for me, I at least had one power left, flight. I flew off as quickly as I could, leaving Dragon Slayer 3000 in the dust. I landed on the ground nearby and was immediately attacked by a saber tooth pig. I was so weak now, I couldn't even fight back. So I just flew away as fast as I could until I got somewhere safe. I was on top of the world and now I'm on the bottom. How could this happen? I took a second to breathe and rest. I needed a way to get my powers back and defeat Dragon Slayer 3000. On day 102, I traveled out of the cold, unforgiving world of the Alps and made my way into the nearby Cherry Blossom Forest. Yeah, this is more like it. I just went through a traumatic event. I need somewhere nice and calm to stay. But before I could make myself a new base to stay, I needed to make myself a whole new set of tools. I busted down a tree and made myself a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. That's a good start. Now let's go for stone. I mined into the ground with my wooden pickaxe and started collecting stone until I had enough to create a stone pickaxe, axe, and stone sword. It's building time. I started cutting down some of the cherry blossom trees until I'd collected enough materials to start constructing my base. I started small at first, seeing as I was small now too, building a room for myself to sleep in. But I didn't have enough material to finish the roof, so I went into the woods to collect more materials. That's when I ran into an angry zombie spoiner. Oh no, this day is bad enough already. I don't want to deal with any zombies today. I pulled out my stone sword and fought him off. Lucky for me, I still wasn't too weak to take down a zombie spoiner. Phew, now back to base building. I collected the materials I needed, then went back to my base to finish off the roof. It was a small base, but it was a good start, and I knew I could build myself back up from here. On day 103, I decided to travel around, hoping to collect some more wood for constructing my base and find out more about the crazy robot that had attacked me back in the Alps. That's why I went to the coniferous forest, but this forest wasn't quite as welcoming as the cherry blossom forest. My big clue was a huge vile ogre who showed up and tried to shake me down for some emeralds. You have to pay the troll toll if you want to pass through this forest, puny dragon. But you're not even a troll. You're an ogre. They're not the same thing. Ugh, what a silly technicality. I'm gonna pound you for that, kid. He gave me a powerful whack after that, taking off a few of my hearts. Remembering the powerful dragon I once was, I pulled out my stone sword and fought back until the vile ogre was defeated. Darn, I'm still injured though. This is the worst. But in my moment of need, a mysterious spirit appeared. The guardian of the forest. Hello, little dragon. You're certainly a rare one. I wasn't always little. Wait, what do you mean I'm a rare one? That terrible machine has been destroying dragons in droves. You're the only one I've seen in ages. Terrible machine? You mean the Dragon Slayer 3000? The very same. You look injured. Here, take these healing potions. 
I took the potions and it immediately helped me reclaim all of my hearts. Thank you, Forest Guardian. Want to come back to my base with me? We can work towards destroying that machine for good. I like the sound of that. Lead the way, Zozo. From day 104 to day 105, the Guardian of the Forest and I went back to my base. It was still pretty tiny, and there was no room for the Guardian to fit in as is. No worries, Guardian. I'll build you a new room where you can stay. I mined some extra wood and stone from around the Cherry Blossom Forest and used it to add a nice new house onto the base. A house that would be perfect for a Forest Guardian, complete with some plants and a window to let in the sun. He seemed impressed. This is perfect, Zozo. I think I'll enjoy my time here with you. But he was wrong. Not everything was perfect because a gang of skeletons had heard all my construction work and were making their way towards the base. Oh no, I better take them out before they can ruin anything. I pulled out my stone sword and charged in. Skeletons were no match for even a small dragon, so it didn't take me long to defeat them all. And when they were gone, I noticed that they dropped some potions of regeneration. Yes. I added them all to my inventory. It's always good to have some of these on hand for emergencies. From day 106 to day 108, I got a crazy craving for fried eggs. But I couldn't just go to the store to get them. I needed to do it the old-fashioned way. I built a chicken coop and a fenced-off area on my base. Perfect for a little free-range chicken farm. Then I started collecting chickens and herding them back to my base. I'll have a steady supply of delicious eggs in no time. I can hardly wait. Still feeling hungry in the short term, I decided to go wandering through the cherry blossom forest again, hoping I'd find something cool to eat. Instead, I found something very different. It was the Dragon Slayer 3000, and his big red eye was fixed on me. Dragon detected. Can't we just talk this out? Initiation Destruction Protocol D4, Dragon Slaying Cyber Battle Axe. The Dragon Slayer 3000 pulled a huge battle axe, seemingly out of thin air, and he charged for me, swinging the axe again and again, only barely missing me each time. Resistance is futile. All dragons will be annihilated. The Dragon Slayer 3000 had really earned its name. I needed to get out of there before it could slay me. I took off and flew away, trying to get as far away from that robotic monster as possible. But back on the ground, the Dragon Slayer 3000 was unfazed. Tracking flight pattern, processing estimated arrival location. This dragon will not escape. From day 109 to day 110, I returned back to my base, still feeling terrified after my close encounter with Dragon Slayer 3000. He'd taken my powers, he'd taken my size and my progress, and he'd almost taken my life. I'm so scared that the next time I run into that evil robot, he'll destroy me for good. Just as I was slipping into anxiety and panic, the guardian of the forest came into my room with some encouraging words. Zozo, I sense you've been feeling down. I understand, the odds are against you, and you've lost a great deal. You may think you're weak, but strength is not about how hard you can strike. It's about how hard you can be struck and keep on fighting. Go outside, and you'll see a statue I've been working on just for you. That's so kind, Forest Guardian. I'll head out there and take a look now. So I did. I went outside and saw the statue that the Forest Guardian had been working on, and it looked amazing. This is so cool. I can't wait to see what it'll be when it's done. What do you think it'll be when it's done? Just as I was admiring his hard work on the statue, the Forest Guardian came over with some more good news. That ain't the only thing I've made for you. Go back to the base and you'll see another upgrade I've been working on. I think it'll come in handy with keeping an eye out for that terrible machine. I went back to the base and saw that the Forest Guardian had transformed one of the cherry blossom trees into an awesome watchtower. It would be a perfect way to keep an eye on the forest around us and know if the Dragon Slayer 3000 was on his way. I'm starting to feel more powerful again already. I can do this thing. From day 111 to day 112, feeling more confident than before, I went back out into the cherry blossom forest to understand my surroundings better. This time, if I ran into the robot, I wouldn't run away like a scared little coward. I'd stand up for myself and fight like a real dragon. But lucky for me, I didn't run into the Dragon Slayer 3000 at all. Instead, I found my way to a cozy little cabin where a friendly old witch was waiting. Hello there, dearie. You look a little tired from all your wandering. How about you rest here and talk with me for a little bit? I'd love that, thank you. I'm Zozo. So what are you doing out here, sweetheart? 
you are walking with a real sense of purpose. As a matter of fact, I do have a purpose. I'm trying to get my dragon strength back so I can defeat the Dragon Slayer 3000. Oh, oh dear. What's wrong? It's just that if you're planning on going up against that metal monstrosity, I recommend you be extremely careful. You have no idea the terrible things it's capable of. There used to be many dragons around here, and not just little baby ones like you. Adult dragons at their full power. And within 100 days, the Dragon Slayer 3000 wiped them all out, one by one. You'll need to be exceptionally powerful if you want to defeat it. Well, that sure fills me with confidence. From day 113 to day 115, I returned to the coniferous forest, wondering if there was anything valuable I'd missed during my first trip there. You can only imagine my surprise when another big, mean vile ogre jumped out of the woods, right in front of me. Wait, how can you be here? Didn't I defeat you before? No, oh, that was my brother. He was out here, minding his own business, and you started to fight with him. He was literally trying to shake me down for money in a forest he didn't own. He even hit me first. That doesn't sound like him at all. For defaming my brother's memory, you're going down, you teeny tiny little dragon. The vile ogre attacked me. He fought just like his brother, but this time I was prepared. Before he could take too much health from me, I defeated him with my stone sword and leveled up. I got bigger, and my total hearts rose up to 20, and I gained back one of my most important abilities, fire breathing. Now I'm getting my dragon mojo back, baby. From day 116 to day 119, seeing as I'd upgraded my size and strength, I figured it was time to level up my weapons and equipment too. That's why I found my way to an underground cavern that was perfect for mining myself some extra materials, specifically some iron ore. Once I'd gathered up enough, I started building an underground furnace so I could smelt the ore into ingots and start creating all my new gear. But I was interrupted by another nasty creature living in the underground cavern, a deadly giant cave spider, and he thought I looked like a delicious dragon snack. Well, I hope you like your meals extra spicy, cave spider. I huffed and I puffed and I breathed a jet of flame right at the cave spider, scaring it back into the darkness. It definitely wouldn't bother me after that. Then, I used all that iron I collected to make myself an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. I was officially stronger than ever before. And one day, I'm gonna use this sword to destroy the robot that ruined my life. From day 120 to day 122, I spent one day just resting at the base, having no idea that the day after would bring me my toughest battle yet. That day started with the guardian of the forest waking me up in a blind panic and telling me the last thing I wanted to hear at that moment. Zozo, Dragon Slayer 3000, he's here. He's practically outside the gates. We need to stop him before it's too late. Oh no. I ran as quickly as I could. I hoped that I'd been dreaming for a while until I saw that the forest guardian was absolutely right. Dragon Slayer 3000 was standing right next to the base, carrying his battle axe. Dragon detected. Initiate destruction methods. Wait, why do you want to destroy us dragons so badly? Is it something we did to you? What you do to me is irrelevant. My programming dictates that I must destroy all dragons I detect at all costs. Who programmed you like that anyway? You do not need to know. Battle axe attack initiated. Talking time was over. Dragon Slayer 3000 ran at me with his battle axe again, getting two strikes in before I was able to hit him back with my sword. And when I did, it didn't seem to cause much damage. I decided with the threat of getting slain right here in front of me, it was time to unleash my latest dragon power, Fire Breath. I breathed my fire at Dragon Slayer 3000 and it almost seemed to short circuit him for a moment. He backed away, looking confused. Dragon has accessed fire abilities. Activate contingency plan G6. Retreat mode initiated. And with that, the Dragon Slayer 3000 fled back into the forest and out of sight. I hadn't defeated him fully this time, but somehow, after this fight, I finally understood that this monster wasn't invincible. If I kept getting stronger, I could defeat him once and for all. From day 123 to day 126, I was working on creating a weapon upgrade for my iron sword. After seeing how Dragon Slayer 3000 reacted to me using my fire breathing on him, I thought he might have some kind of weakness to fire. 
That's why I applied the fire aspect enchantment, which would lend extra fire damage to every single swing of my sword. This is really going to help me out on my quest. And if you'd also like to help me out on my quest, search ZOZO -Zo in the search bar to find and watch more adventures with me. Zozo, we're going to have an awesome time. From day 127 to day 131, the Guardian of the Forest came over to share some less stressful news with me than the last time. Zozo, I've done more work on the statue. Come check it out. Of course, I'll be right over. I met with the Guardian outside and saw all of the amazing work he'd been doing on the statue. It looked so cool. The Guardian certainly had a real talent for building statues. But for this next part, I need your help, Zozo. The statue is coming along nicely, but I need some ebony logs to really take it to the next level. Would you be able to journey out to the ebony forest and get me some? I'll be there and back before you know it. That was a bit of an exaggeration, but I did travel out to the ebony forest as quickly as I could gather up the material I needed for the forest guardian statue. On the way there, I ran into an enderman who really didn't like intruders entering his forest, even if they were just dropping in to grab some equipment. You better not tell me I need to pay the enderman toll. Thankfully, some fire breath was enough to scare the enderman away, and I was able to gather up plenty of the material the guardian of the forest needed to keep building and improving the statue. From day 132 to day 135, I started making my way back to the ebony forest, eager to give all the materials I'd gathered over to the forest guardian. On the way there, though, things started to get strange. I spotted a flying ghast, which is normally only seen in the nether. What are you doing out here? The ghasts obviously didn't reply. They attacked me with their ranged attack, and I replied in kind and flew up towards it and hit it with my fire breath, knocking the ghast out of the sky. It feels so good to be a dragon. As I continued my journey back towards my base, I ran into a worried-looking piglin. I stopped to see if he needed any help. Hey, little piglin, don't be afraid. You look like you need a hand. Anything I can help with? Oh, oh yes, thank goodness. You've really saved my bacon here. My uh, piglin friend was kidnapped by an evoker and his zombie minions had dragged out to the Mojave Desert. I'd go on my own, but I worry I'm not strong enough. And then we both be captured. Don't worry, piglin, I'll get right on it. And with my new quest, I set off. From day 136 to day 139, I traveled until I reached the Mojave Desert. It was exhaustingly hot and dry out there, but it didn't take me long to discover a mini base set up deep in the scorching heat of the Mojave. It was a fenced off area surrounded by patrolling hordes of zombies. Inside the camp, a piglin was locked in a cage and the evoker stood there talking to him. We'll see how much your friend cares about you, little piglin. Maybe if he comes and gives me the money we agreed to, I'll let you both go. Or maybe I'll just kidnap you both. Please, you can't do that. You're in my clutches, piglin. You can't tell me what I can and can't do. I'm holding all the cards here. <laughs> Watching this happen, I knew I needed to get in there and stop this. I'd free the piglin and defeat that evil evoker, and my dragon powers would help me do it. From day 140 to day 143, I launched my plan to defeat the evoker and save the piglin. Rather than fighting all the zombies gathered outside, I flew and lowered myself down into the camp from above. The evoker didn't seem happy about that. How dare you invade my camp, you lousy dragon! Zombies, eat them alive! Zombies inside the camp rushed towards me. I pulled out my iron sword to fight them off, but there seemed to be no end to the zombie horde. The sword isn't powerful enough to take them all, even with the fire aspect. But in the nick of time, I got lucky. I saw a kyther lying on the ground, exactly what I needed. Don't mind if I do. I grabbed the kyther, going crazy and taking out every zombie I could. Soon enough, there were no zombies left. It was just me, the evoker, and the trapped piglin. The evoker backed away, feeling a little nervous. No hard feelings about me telling the zombies to eat you alive, right? That was just uh, a prank, bro. Instead of answering his question, I blasted him with a jet of flame. After that, I freed the piglin. Thank you so much, kind stranger. How can I ever repay you? Go back to your friend in the ebony forest. He's been worried about you. That's the only repayment I need. 
From day 144 to day 149, I returned back to my base and gave the Guardian of the Forest all the materials I'd collected for him in the Ebony Forest. Thank you for these, Zozo. It took you a while to get them. Was everything okay? Oh yeah, it was fine. Just got a little sidetracked. I'm gonna get working on some base improvements while you work on the statue. Sounds good to me, Zozo. I decided to work on a security perimeter wall around the base while the guardian of the forest was statue building. I built the wall nice and tall just to make sure it kept out potential invaders. Once I finished the construction and stood back to take in the side of my big, powerful wall, the guardian of the forest approached me again with the good news. Come take a look at the statue, Zozo. It's almost done. So I did exactly what he said. I went to take a look at the statue and was amazed at what I saw. The forest guardian was clearly a statue building whiz. Can you tell what it is yet? Let me know down in the comments. From day 150 to day 153, I woke up to some more bad news. The Dragon Slayer 3000 was once again waiting right outside my base and the guardian of the forest was following along. Oh no, he's kidnapped my friend. But I couldn't just chase after them because at the exact same time, a group of husks that the evil machine must have led here were attacking my base. My anger at that monstrous robot kidnapping my friend let me fight even harder. And during my battle with the gang of husks, I got enough XP to level up and become even stronger. I got bigger. My total hearts increased up to 50. I used my newfound strength to take out the last of the husks. My base was safe, but the guardian of the forest was still gone and I needed to save him. From day 154 to day 157, I checked around my base to make sure there weren't any holes in the walls besides the entryways. You have to keep a keen eye to make sure your walls are as sturdy as they can be. After my base was secured, I went to go meet my other ally in the Cherry Blossom Forest, the witch in her cozy cabin, to get her advice on what to do next. I sat across from her and told her about the situation. Since you first came to me, Zozo, I've been doing some research and I think I might have information that could help you. A few hundred years ago, there were some extremely dangerous dragons on the prowl. Some scientist working in the lush tundra created robots like the Dragon Slayer 3000. But even once those few dangerous dragons were destroyed, the machines endured. I've just never seen one this advanced before. Still, if you want to save the guardian of the forest, checking the lush tundra may be your best option. Just be careful out there. From day 158 to day 162, knowing that my best friend was trapped in the territory of my most dangerous enemy, I needed to get better weaponry. That's why I once again returned to the underground cavern where I did my previous mining. And as usual, I had another guest while I was down there. What I wasn't expecting was for that guest to be a creeper. I panicked as it skittered towards me, ready to explode. It was terrifying, but I managed to get away just in time. Boom, the creeper exploded. If the Dragon Slayer 3000 doesn't get me, the stress of these 100 days is gonna be what finishes me off. At first, I thought this was just another one of my many near-death experiences, but these lemons came with a free side of lemonade. In the crater left by the creeper exploding, there were a bunch of diamonds. It looks like my luck is finally turning around today. I gathered up all the diamonds and forged them into a powerful diamond sword, a perfect weapon for taking on that diabolical droid. Now all I needed was the courage to actually go and do it, knowing how scary and dangerous the Dragon Slayer 3000 truly was. From day 163 to day 166, I returned back to my base with my new diamond sword, feeling frightened and worried about what I needed to do, even though my friend's life was at stake. To make myself feel a little better, I gave my diamond sword the fire aspect enchantment, just like with my old iron sword. That would make it a more effective weapon against Dragon Slayer 3000, but I was still afraid. I stood and looked at the statue that the Guardian of the Forest had created for me. It wasn't done yet, and if I didn't save the Forest Guardian, it would never be finished. It would be an eternal reminder that I'd let my friend down. I won't let you down, Forest Guardian. I'm gonna come and save you from that evil machine, no matter the risk. I'm going to the lush tundra and I'm gonna help you. And if you wanna help me, you can subscribe to Zozo and turn on notifications so you never miss another one of my exciting Minecraft adventures. From day 167 to day 170, I put my money where my mouth was and traveled all the way to the lush tundra. 
I searched around until I discovered what looked like an abandoned factory. This must be where Dragon Slayer 3000 was created. He probably turned it into his base when all the scientists left. If the Forest Guardian is going to be anywhere, it's here. I ran into the building and immediately found that more hordes of husks had made their home here, just like the ones that he'd led to attack my base. I must have been getting closer. Come at me, husks. You don't stand a chance. The husks did come at me in whole swarms. With my diamond sword, I was able to cut down a lot of them, and I defeated even more with my fiery breath. There was no way I was letting any of those low-level mobs stop me from saving my friend. It wasn't long before I was standing in an empty room, having defeated all of the husks. I kept searching the building, trying to find where they might be keeping my friend. Forest Guardian, it's me, Zozo. I've come here to help you. That's when I heard a voice at the other end of a deep, dark hallway that went into the ground. Zozo, oh thank goodness, I'm down here. Please, come save me. I ran down the long hall and saw the room where the Guardian of the Forest was trapped. I didn't waste any time and busted down the bars that were holding him. I'm so glad you're safe, Forest Guardian. I don't even know why he kidnapped you. You're not even a dragon. He's an incredibly intelligent machine, Zozo. I think he kidnapped me just because he knew that you'd come and save me. Let's go back to the base before he realizes you're in here. No, Forest Guardian, I'm sorry. I want you to go back to the base, but I'm through with running. Keep the base safe for me. I'll come back once I've defeated this robot, once and for all. Just be careful, Zozo. I have a feeling he's got at least one more trick up his silver sleeve. With that, the Guardian of the Forest turned and left, and I started going deeper into the Dragon Slayer's base. From day 171 to day 174, I went deeper into the abandoned factory. While in there, I found a dusty old chest locked away in a corner. It contained two things. One was a potion of strength, and the other was a book marked Scientist Notes. I looked through the book, and it contained the following. We witnessed an extraordinary event in the factory today. Our Dragon Slayer 2000 model seem to have gained true intelligence. In fact, they use this intelligence to construct an entirely new machine, the Dragon Slayer 3000. It's the first machine to be planned and built entirely by other machines. Whoa, that explains why this thing is so cold and cruel. The sooner I can put this rogue robot down, the better. From day 175 to day 178, now knowing of his true origin, I went far enough into the factory to discover Dragon Slayer 3000 waiting for me. Dragon detected, prepare for your immediate annihilation. Funny, I was about to say the exact same thing to you. I didn't want to waste any more time talking to this evil machine. Instead, I ran in and pulled out my diamond sword. I hit the robot again and again and again, not even giving him a chance to fight back. I wanted to end it there and then, but before I could deliver the final blow, Dragon Slayer 3000 stepped away and ran into a nearby room. I went running after him as fast as I could. I'm not gonna let you get away with this anymore, Dragon Slayer. Your days of hunting us dragons are over. From day 179 to day 184, I entered the main chamber of the factory. It was large and completely abandoned, but I still saw the glowing red eye of the Dragon Slayer 3000 staring at me. But this time, I wasn't going to let him go. I'd defeated him and sent him running before. Now it was time to finish him off. Time for the Dragon Slayer 3000 to get slayed by a dragon. I've got to say, Dragon Slayer, I enjoy the irony. I wasn't programmed to have any sense of irony. It is of no use to me. The point is, I'm going to destroy you for everything you've done to me and dragons like me. There's no place in the world for a machine like you. Then I will have to upgrade. Activate Contingency Plan Z13. Metamorphosis Protocol. Uh, what? Dragon Slayer 3000 began to transform, getting bigger, scarier, and way more advanced. I'd never seen anything like it. All my confidence in the fight completely drained away in that moment. Upgrade complete. I am now Dragon Slayer 4000, the ultimate stage of my technological evolution. My capabilities have increased, and I can now destroy even the strongest dragons. You cannot harm me, Zozo. Oh no, I think I may have overestimated my ability here. Destruction Blast! The new Dragon Slayer 4000 blasted an even more powerful energy weapon. I was able to dodge it in the nick of time and ran out of there as fast as I could. I need to figure something out fast or I'm doomed. From day 185 to day 189, I returned to my base in a blind panic. I immediately went up to the Guardian of the Forest. 
Hello again, Zozo. Thank you again for saving me. Ready to celebrate finally defeating Dragon Slayer 3000? Not quite. Kind of the opposite, actually. Dragon Slayer 3000 got even more powerful. He upgraded into Dragon Slayer 4000. And I don't know how I'm going to defeat him like that. Oh no, that's the last thing we wanted to happen. Here, take this knockback enchantment. It'll make your attacks a little more effective. I believe someone is here to see you. In the meantime, I'm going to go finish up the statue. Who's come to visit me? It turned out that it was none other than the witch, coming straight to my base to deliver some valuable news. Zozo, I have something that I think you'll want to hear. Please tell me it's good news. Oh yes, very good news. I've tracked down something that can fast track your leveling up. A special potion known as Dragon Serum. It will help you grow into a full-size dragon with all the relevant special abilities. They say it ran out years ago, but I've tracked down one more bottle of it in a single chest. That's amazing! Do you know where I can find this chest? It's in a place you may find familiar, the Mojave Desert. That's perfect! I'll set off right away! Stay at my base in the meantime, Miss Witch, just to be safe! But before I could leave, I heard the Guardian of the Forest calling out for me. Before you go, Zozo, I have something to show you. The statue is finally finished. Excited to see what the Guardian of the Forest had created, I flew up high towards the mountains next to my base to get a better view. It was amazing! A beautiful statue of a powerful adult warden dragon! It looked exactly like I did before the Dragon Slayer stole all of my power. Thank you, Forest Guardian. This is truly awesome! And when I get my hands on that Dragon Serum, that's gonna be me again! On day 190 to day 194, I returned once again to the Mojave Desert, where I'd defeated the Evoker and his minions and saved the Piglin. If only last time I'd been looking for that chest, this whole thing might have been over a lot sooner. I searched all across the desert, feeling the intense heat on my dragon scales. Whoever had hidden that serum up here must have really wanted to keep it hidden. Eventually, I found a small chest hidden amongst a bunch of sand blocks. I opened up the chest and inside was one item, a potion labeled Dragon Serum. Yes, I found it! I finally found it! I can become a full-size dragon, access my complete powers, and use them to even the score against Dragon Slayer 4000! With the Dragon Serum saved in my inventory, I turned and made my way back to my base! From day 195 to day 197, I worked on my final few upgrades, knowing that the battle that would decide the fate of all the dragons in the overworld would soon come to pass. And if I didn't win, Dragon Slayer 4000 might not just wipe out me, he might have wiped out my entire species. I better go in strong then. I gave my sword the sweeping edge enchantment to increase its power, and also crafted a full set of iron armor. This would give me a better chance in the final fight. But what if the Dragon Slayer 4000 defeats me, then immediately comes back here to attack my friends? I can't let that happen! Or at the very least, I can't make it easy for him! I decided that I wasn't going to, so I built the wall around my base thicker, knowing that I'd buy the Guardian of the Forest and the Witch some time to escape if that evil robot did come looking for them. It's all or nothing now! On day 198, I prepared to leave my base and go to the lush tundra so I could take on and decommission this rogue robot once and for all. But what do you want to see next from Zozo? Search ZOZO -Z on the search bar and leave a comment on one of our videos telling us what you'd like to see next. I always love reading through them. Oh, and wish me luck on my battle with Dragon Slayer 4000. I'm gonna need it. Time to settle that age-old debate of robot versus dragon. On day 199, I returned to the abandoned factory in the lush tundra. When I entered the main chamber of the building yet again, the Dragon Slayer 4000 was waiting for me. Dragon detected. Yeah, yeah, you detected me. Well done. I'm about to get a whole lot easier to detect in a second. Attempts to intimidate me are futile, Zozo. I will be the agent of your destruction. Activate battle axe. Turn shields to 100%. Prepare to be destroyed. Time for you to take your own advice, you evil bucket of bolts! Before Dragon Slayer 4000 even had a chance to attack me, I drank the Dragon Serum. In an instant, everything changed. I became a huge, powerful Warden Dragon adult with the 100 hearts I had 100 days ago. But that wasn't all. I had a new power now, the Fireball Attack. Dragon detected, Dragon detected, this does not compute. Compute this! Summoning up every last ounce of my strength, I fired a fire blast directly at the Dragon Slayer 4000! No! 
The blast was so powerful, he was destroyed instantly. I'd reclaimed my former glory, and the dragon-hating machine was finally gone for good. On day 200, with the evil of the Dragon Slayer 4000 finally defeated, and all my fallen dragon friends avenged, I returned back to my base. There, the Guardian of the Forest and the Witch were already waiting to congratulate me. For the first time in over a hundred days, I felt like my old dragon self again, and I could finally relax. Don't you just love a happy ending? On day one, I spawned in as a mighty dinosaur. Well, not really. I was pretty small and only had four hearts. I'm just a baby. Uh -oh. I looked around and noticed there weren't any other dinosaurs around. And then I noticed I was in an enclosure with tall walls. Hey, that's no fair. I want to run around and be free. I ran around looking for a way out. I couldn't find anything. Just then, I heard a bell go off and I saw some food being lowered into my cage. I was hungry, but I still needed to find a way out. The food lowered to the ground and I ate all of it. Then I got a brilliant idea. I held onto the hook as it was brought back up to the edge of the wall. I jumped on the edge, free from my enclosure. Then I jumped off and ran toward the jungle. Dinosaurs are meant to be free. As I was running, I saw a human in a car trying to chase after me. He started shooting at me. Ah! I managed to jump over a large tree that had fallen down, but the car couldn't get through. One human threw his weapon down in anger and yelled at me. We'll get you back. Mark my words. What a weird guy. I found a little cave and decided to hide out there for the night. I would go looking around for more dinosaurs in the morning. On day two, I woke up feeling very hungry. Man. I'm gonna need to find more food if I want to survive out here. I quickly began chopping down some trees and managed to make a crafting table. With that, I made some wood tools. I feel a bit more prepared now. I explored further in the jungle and found some sheep. I hurried and got their meat before they could run away. I really needed to gain my strength back. Mmm, yummy. As I was enjoying my food, I heard a snap of a twig. I turned and saw a small ocelot trying to hide behind some bushes. Wow. Hey, do you want some food? The ocelot peeked out and slowly came and grabbed some meat from me. Thank you. Of course. What are you? I'm a dinosaur. You won't eat me, will you? No, I won't. Have you never seen a dinosaur before? The ocelot shook his head. I know that park over there has dinosaurs, but I've never seen one until today. Interesting. I wondered what that park was all about and why there weren't any other dinosaurs on the island. Thanks again for the food. You take care of yourself. You too. He ran off into the jungle. I need to figure out what's going on here. On day three, I gathered some more materials to make a little base. I knew that the humans would probably be back and I wanted to be ready for them. Once the base was finished, I went out to look for some food. Boy, am I hungry again. I managed to find a bunch of sheep and tried to herd them back to my base. But then a bunch of alligators came and started attacking me. Get back, you nasties. I used my sword and my pure strength to fight them off and before I knew it, they were all gone. Just then, I felt a surge of power and I grew into a teenage T-Rex. Hey, I have more hearts now. I finished gathering the sheep and led them back to my base. I hurried and set up a pen for them. What a good day. On days four to five, I made my way back to the park to scout it out. Maybe I could learn more if I watched what the humans were doing. I was searching around and found some rusty shears. These might come in handy. Just then, I saw a bunch of humans driving toward me. I ran through some rocks and dirt hills to lose them, but they just kept following me. I roared at them, and the force almost toppled their car over. That's new. This caused one human to fall out of the car. The driver didn't stop, and they left him. He got out his weapon and started shooting darts at me. Hey, stop it! I roared again, and the force made him fall over. I was starting to feel the effects of the dart. Ouch! I felt pretty woozy. What was that? The human pulled out a walkie-talkie. Dr. Holland, I have subdued test subject A. Come to this location to retrieve him. I couldn't let the humans take me, especially not this Dr. Harland. He sounded like bad news. I mustered up my strength and smacked the human with my tail, sending him flying over a cliffside. I gotta get out of here. The sleeping dart definitely was doing its job, but I managed to get back home before completely passing out. I'll have to find that doctor tomorrow. On day six to eight, I woke up, still feeling a little groggy. That wasn't super fun. I need to be sure not to get shot again. I went out and grabbed some food before heading out to gather more supplies. I needed some better weapons to defend myself. I went further into the jungle and spotted a small mountain. I started to mine out some of the materials and set up a crafting table to make myself a new stone sword, pickaxe, and shovel. Nice! 
I was about to make my way further up the mountain when I saw some little jaguars hanging out. They're kind of cute. But that was short-lived because they started to jump and bite at me. Come on, guys, I'm not food. They didn't back down, so I used my new sword to fight them off. It only took a minute before I defeated them all. Thank goodness for that. Otherwise, I would look like Swiss cheese. I ate some food to heal, and I headed further into the jungle. On days 9 to 10, I journeyed past the trees to the edge of the island. It was beautiful. Too bad there were humans trying to hunt me down. Just then, I heard a screeching of tires and saw a car coming towards me. Wow, I was just thinking about the humans, and then they show up. Maybe I have superpowers. I started to think of it raining sheep and… nothing. Well, it was worth a shot. I started to run away from the car, but they caught up to me pretty quick. The guy I had seen earlier who had thrown down his weapon was inside. He must have been Dr. Harland. You can't run away from me now. You're mine. Go away. The car soon caught up to me, and the humans had me cornered. Ah! A heavy iron cage made out of chains pinned me down. Thank goodness for that tracker. We didn't realize it was attached to you until later, because Jones never came back. But at least he did his job right. Dr. Harlan plucked something off my leg. It looked like a dart, but then I noticed a little blinking beacon. That human, Jones, must have shot me with a tracker a few days ago. I felt so silly. I don't belong with you. I belong out in the wild. Dr. Harlan just laughed. <laughs> I was confused and desperate. I needed to get out. Just then, I felt a whoosh of air, and part of the cage was broken. I saw a blur of pink whizzing past me. Run, Zozo! I ran, following the pink blur back toward my base. When we finally stopped, I realized the pink blur wasn't just a blur. It was another T-Rex. The dinosaur jumped down from behind cover and scared me. I knew there were other dinosaurs on the island. I'm Zozo. The dinosaur smiled at me. I'm Zoe. I'm your sister. Sister? Wait, back up. What? We're twins. I was put in a different enclosure, though. I heard that you escaped, and everyone was freaking out, so I took my chance when they went looking for you and climbed out as well. They really need to work on their security system. But hey, good for us though, right? Right. So, you're super fast? Zoe nodded her head and zoomed in a circle, demonstrating her speed. Wow. What can you do? Uh, I don't know. Am I supposed to be able to do something? Zoe looked a little uncomfortable. No, not really. Oh, wait! I can move things with my roar. It's like a sonic power. I showed it off. That's really cool! Do all dinosaurs have powers like us? No, I guess we are just special. Zoe seemed like she wasn't telling me something. I was going to ask her what she knew, but then I heard her stomach growl. Hey, how about I get you some food? You must be starving. That'd be great, actually. Thanks! We went to the farm and ate until we were both full. Zoe must have not eaten for a long time because she had double of what I had. Wow. How about you live here? It's safe, there's plenty of food, and I'd love for you to stay with me. Zoe looked really happy about that, and she readily agreed. Sounds like a plan. On days 11 to 12, I made an area for Zoe on the base. I worked hard to give her everything she would need in order to be comfortable. Soon, it was all ready to go. She seemed really happy to have found me, and I was happy to be reunited with the sister I never knew I had. I decided to go exploring a little bit to improve the base and the weapons that I had. While I was out, I came across a flock of birds nesting on some stones. They were beautiful looking woodpeckers. Hey, could I have some of that stone? They seemed friendly enough, but then out of nowhere they started pecking at me. Seriously? I tried to smack them, but they kept flying and then dive bombing me. I need to get out of here. I ran into the trees, hoping to get some coverage. They stopped attacking, but I really needed that stone. What am I gonna do? I looked around the jungle and noticed some long vines hanging from the trees. I had an idea. I gathered some of the vines, a couple small sticks, and a bunch of rocks. This should do the trick. I snuck back to the rock formation and attacked them with my new weapon, a slingshot. Take that! It worked perfectly, and before I knew it, all the birds were gone. Nice! And I have some food to take back to Zoe. I gathered the bird meat and started mining out the rocks. It took a while, but I finally got enough to make some new furnaces. This is awesome! I headed back to the base and showed Zoe my new weapon. She was super impressed and even asked if I could make her one. I happily agreed. She was super excited and shot with the slingshot towards the lake. Once that was done, I used some wooden logs to build a wall surrounding the base. It was all starting to come together. Yes. On days 13 to 15, I had a weird dream. I was back in the park, but it looked like I was in a lab of some sort. People were poking and prodding at me. I saw Zoe and she was chained down. Let her go! 
Then the dream changed and Dr. Harland was there. He was presenting us to a large crowd of humans. He had trapped us in enclosures and we were chained. The humans stared and laughed at us. It was horrible. I woke from the dream with a start. Whoa, that was terrible. I went to go find Zoe. I told her about the dream and asked her what it meant. She hesitated. We are lab experiments, Zozo. We aren't natural dinosaurs. Dr. Harlan grew us in the lab, giving us special abilities. Why would he do that? He's not just a doctor. He also owns this entire park over there. He genetically engineers dinosaurs for human entertainment. That's awful. But you and I are special. He made us specifically for a new exhibit he's working on. This was a lot to take in. We were being hunted by an angry doctor and his goons. It felt like the odds were definitely against us. On days 16 to 19, I woke up to find that Zoe wasn't in the base. Zoe! I looked everywhere and called out to her, but I couldn't find her. I wonder where she went. I looked around the entrance and noticed some footprints. They looked a lot like mine, but were smaller. These must be Zoe's footprints. I followed them, leading away into the jungle. They stopped at the mouth of a cave. Oh no, I hope Zoe's okay. I tried to quietly creep in the cave, my slingshot at the ready. I heard some muffled screaming, along with some maniacal laughter. That doesn't sound good. I went further down, and I saw Zoe. She was all tied up. There was also a monkey tied up next to her. Around them were a bunch of big, hairy spiders. Oh, gross. I charged, shooting rocks as I went. The spiders looked alarmed and tried to scurry away, but I managed to fight them all off. I hurried and freed Zoe, just as she yelled at me. Zozo, look out! I turned around, and there was the biggest spider I had ever seen in my life. Granted, I was only a few days old, but still. You're taking my dinner. That's my sister. She's not food. I slung some rocks at the huge spider before charging at him. He smacked me with his legs, and I was nearly down to my last heart when I remembered my roar. I let out a big roar. The force made the spider fall over. I then attacked with my tail and weapons, and within no time, he was gone. Victory is mine! All of a sudden, I felt power course through my body, and I leveled up into an adult T-Rex. Nice! I had way more hearts, and my tail could swing faster now. I helped finish freeing Zoe and the monkey. Thanks for rescuing me. I'm Crew. I'm Zozo. I looked over at Zoe, and she was shaking. Are you okay? That was so scary. I went out this morning before you got up, and I was ambushed by those spiders. I tried to roar, but they tied my mouth closed before I had a chance to call for you. I'm glad I found you. Being spider food wasn't really a part of my grand plan. Zoe laughed and crew joined us. You're from that park over there. I knew there were dinosaurs, but nobody has seen any. Yeah, we managed to escape Dr. Harland, but he is kind of crazy. He wants to bring us back so he can make money off of us and all the other dinosaurs. That's awful. How many more dinosaurs are there? We don't know, but they don't belong in there. We need to help them escape. Crew thought for a minute. I might be able to help out with that. Really? How? This island has been inhabited by dinosaurs before, a really long time ago. There was a T-Rex like you guys that had a special item that could ward off the humans. That sounds awesome. Do you know where it is? No, sorry. Legend says it's on the island somewhere, but nobody has found it. This was good news. Maybe we could make the humans leave for good. On days 20 to 22, Crew came with us to the base. He seemed to really like us and wasn't scared like most animals were. He was also really funny and would ride on our back sometimes. Once we got back to the base, we tried to get settled in, but then a bunch of jaguars showed up, trying to get our sheep. Hey, there's enough food for all of us. You don't need to steal from us. They didn't listen and just continued to attack. With our combined strength, the jaguars were gone in no time. We made some improvements to the base, including a treehouse for Crew to hang out in. He really seemed to like it. Hey Zoe, would you want to help me with something? Yeah, sure. What is it? I want to make a statue. I want the humans to know that they can't mess with us, and I want all the dinosaurs to know that there is hope to be free. That sounds awesome, Zozo! We chatted about the design and started on the base of the statue. Can you tell what it's going to be? Also, if you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to subscribe. We love having you here on our adventures. On days 23 to 26, I woke up to the base being attacked again. They broke through the wall. I guess the Jaguars had some reinforcements and didn't like that they couldn't get to our sheep. Come on, guys, really? Zoe and crew joined me, and with their help, we defeated the Jaguars in no time. 
I noticed that one of them had dropped something, so I picked it up. It was an iron sword. Whoa, neat. I swung it around and nearly jabbed Zoe with it. Hey, watch it. Sorry. I looked around the base for a minute. Maybe we need to make some changes to the base so that it's safer. Zoe agreed and we went to work. We worked on expanding the walls and making our own areas larger. We ran out of supplies pretty quickly, so I headed out to gather some more materials. I also would really like some more iron so that I can have some better weapons. I explored for a minute before finding a large cave. I delved deeper and deeper until I found some iron ore. Yes. Perfect! Just then, a bunch of bats came out of nowhere and tried to swarm me! Ah! I hurried and started smacking them with my new sword. The last few that evaded me, I shot with my slingshot. Nice! I really like having a sword. I mined the rest of the iron and hurried to craft myself an iron pickaxe, axe, and an iron helmet. This will be perfect. I left, still feeling accomplished. I had a new weapon and a new tool. I felt like I was on top of the world. On days 27 to 31, I went to Crew to chat with him about the special item that would help me defeat the humans. He was chilling in his treehouse. I was too big to fit, so we just talked from a distance. Well, the legend says that thousands of years ago, many dinosaurs lived on the island in peace. Then one day, the dinosaurs saw a boat approaching. They had no idea what it was, so they didn't fear it. But then the humans landed, and they began to immediately attack the dinosaurs. They took over the island, and started to chop down all the trees and pollute the land. One T-Rex, his name was Ignatius the Great. He sacrificed his most prized possession to the volcano gods in order to gain the legendary item to ward off the humans. What was the item exactly? It was an amulet that granted him awesome power to grow to 10 times his size. Whoa, that is awesome! Right? So he used the amulet to defeat the humans and protect the dinosaurs. So what happened to him and the amulet? I'm not sure exactly. That's all I know. What an interesting story. I hoped that it was true. It could be the answer to all my problems. On days 32 to 35, I thought some more about what Crew said. I really need to find that amulet. And if it's on the island, how hard can it be to find it? I decided to look around for something significant that could possibly help me. While I was venturing further into the island, I came upon a group of ocelots. One of them recognized me. Hey, it's that dinosaur that helped me get food. He ran up to me and started talking to me. His family seemed a little reluctant, so they stayed further back. What are you doing? I'm looking for the amulet that was lost on the island. Do you know anything about it? My little ocelot friend shook his head, but his dad piped up. That amulet corrupts all who hold it. You don't want it. Why do you say that? The dinosaur that held it, Ignatius the Great, began to use the power to unfairly rule all of the dinosaurs. The volcano gods were angry. So they willed the volcano to erupt, taking out all the dinosaurs. That's awful. Well, that's what happens when you mess with power you shouldn't have. I couldn't agree more. I flipped around to see Dr. Harland. How did you find me? It's not that big of an island. I knew I would find you eventually. I tried to run away, but Dr. Harland shot a dart at me. It got me right in the leg, and I immediately felt woozy again. Oh no, I can't. Pass out. Again. Everything was starting to get fuzzy. It's okay. We'll take care of you. Then everything went dark. On days 36 to 39, I woke up back in my house. Huh? Hey, how did I get back here? I went outside and saw the Ocelot family hanging out with Zoe. Look who's awake. My little Ocelot friend ran up to me. Zozo, you're okay. What happened? Dr. Harlan shot you and then you passed out. We worked together to move you. We met your sister outside. She had been looking for you and was worried. She helped us to carry you in. Wow, you guys are the best. Thanks. No problem. I don't even know all of your names. The Ocelot officially introduced himself as Marty. The rest of his family had M names as well. Melissa, Mo, Miley, you get it. Now that you're feeling better, how about we make some room for our new friends? Sounds like a plan. Zoe and I worked on making an enclosure for the Ocelots. I could tell they were scared to be living out on their own. By the time we finished, I could tell they were really happy about it. I decided to talk more with Marty's dad, Marvin, about the legendary amulet. I asked him where it might be, and he shook his head. All I know is that the legend says it was buried with Ignatius somewhere on the north side of the island. That's where his home was. Everyone claims that he was wearing the amulet when the volcano erupted. Interesting. I would have to travel a long way to go looking for it. 
But before I went back out, I got to work on the statue. It was coming along pretty great. Yes. I was excited to finish it. So, was your guess right? On days 40 to 43, I went out to go looking for more iron, since I hadn't found that many deposits nearby. I went north and found a pretty big cave. As I entered, I saw a bunch of snakes slithering around. Not today! I quickly shot them with my slingshot, hit them with my sword, and also used my roar to send them flying into the lava. I was starting to feel really powerful. I journeyed deeper, and sure enough, I found a huge deposit of iron, as well as coal. Yes. I made myself a little crafting table and set up a camp for myself in the cave. With the iron I had collected, I made myself all new tools and weapons. I am the mightiest of T-Rexes! Nobody can stop me now! On days 44 to 49, I journeyed to the north side of the island in search of the amulet. I was tromping through the jungle when I heard a scream. I snuck forward to see a bunch of alligators who had trapped a toucan. It looked like they were about to eat her. Hey, stay away from her! I tromped out from my hiding place and the alligators snapped at me. I guess they didn't like me intruding on their dinner plans. They started to attack me, but with my sonic roar and powerful tail, they were gone in an instant. Thank you, mister. I'm Zozo. I'm Greta. I thought for sure I was going to be alligator food. Well, I'm glad I was around. I've been hearing about the dinosaurs on the island. What brings you over here? I'm looking for the lost amulet of Ignatius the Great. Oh, that's a tricky one, that is. It's supposedly here on the north side of the island, but... What? Well, it's kind of complicated to explain. I think it would be easier if I just showed you. Okay, sounds like a plan to me. On days 50 to 53, I followed Greta further into the north side of the island. We were about to enter a clearing when Greta stopped me. Is that chanting? Yeah. I looked through the trees and saw a temple of some sort. There were a bunch of other toucans gathered around something on a pedestal. Hey, they have the amulet. Wait, Zozo! I didn't listen and I tromped through the trees toward the birds. They immediately squealed in delight and started bowing. Um, what's going on? Oh, great and mighty one, you have heard our call and you have come to retrieve what you have left behind. I looked on the pedestal and noticed that it wasn't an amulet. It was a... Is that a foot? Yes, great Ignatius, it is your foot. We have been saving it for you. I looked behind me and saw Greta was super embarrassed. These must have been her family members. The crazy side of the family, no doubt. Um, yes, I have been missing my foot. Thank you for taking such good care of it. They continued bowing as I went up and grabbed the foot. It was definitely from a T-Rex. Um, my humble toucans, where did you find my foot? One hopped forward eagerly. Oh, yes, we found it over here. We journeyed on a path leading toward a large rock formation. The foot was just sitting right here, oh holy one. Thanks, do you mind if I look around? Do as you wish, great one. The toucan left, and Greta flew up a moment later to rest on my shoulder. I should have warned you. I don't come around here anymore because they are all a bunch of crazies. I mean, who worships a foot? I just laughed. It's fine. It was exciting to say the least. I began digging at the rock formation and sure enough, I found more bones inside. This must be Ignatius. Yes. We managed to uncover all the bones, but there wasn't an amulet in sight. Huh? If he wasn't wearing it, where did it go? All the stories said he was wearing it. This was beginning to feel like a wild goose chase. I gathered all the bones and we headed back toward the base. On days 54 to 57, Greta and I made it back to the base. She didn't want to be with her crazy family, understandably, so we made a little nook for her. She seemed to really like it. Hey, Zozo. It was Crew. He came over to me. What's up? I'm running a little low on food. Do you think you could grab me some more bananas? There's a tree nearby with some in it, but there are also some spiders in there. No problem. I went to the tree Crew was talking about and immediately saw the swarm of spiders. Yuck! I used my slingshot to make them fall out of the tree and then I attacked them. They were no match for my roar and soon enough, they were gone. Sweet! Now Crew can have all the bananas he could want. I used my roar to make the bananas fall out of the tree and I gathered them for my friend. He was ecstatic to see all the food I had gotten for him. Wow, thanks Zozo. Wait here for just a minute. Crew went to work. 
In his treehouse, he started mixing a bunch of ingredients together in the mixing basin. And before I knew it, he had a big loaf of banana bread for me. Where did you even learn to bake? And where did you even get a mixer? I have my ways. Here, hope you like it. I ate it, and it was actually delicious. Mmm, yum. Thanks, crew. He jumped up and down in delight. No problem. On days 58 to 62, I worked on the statue for a little bit. I was nearly done when I heard a scream from down below. The base was being attacked by some humans. Oh no! I hurried to run down to the base and noticed that all my friends had been shot with sleeping darts. The humans were trying to take them away. You let my friends go! I roared with all my might and the humans focused their attention on me. They tried to shoot me, but I dodged them. I managed to take out a few of the guards and then went to chase the rest away. They got scared of me and ran off. Good riddance. I hurried to help my friends get back to their homes when I noticed that Zoe was missing. Zoe! I looked outside the base and I saw her lying on the ground. She didn't look too good. Uh -oh. Zoe, let's get you inside so you can sleep. They didn't hit me with a sleeping arrow, Zozo. They hit me with a real bullet. What? Why? I heard one of Dr. Harlan's men say that they just needed one dinosaur for the exhibit. You. So I charged him. And he shot me. Oh no, Zoe. It's okay. The hunter that shot me, Brett, said that they were going to get the amulet from its secret hiding place. Zoe weakly handed me a map. They dropped this. Hurry, Zozo. Take care of the rest of the dinosaurs. Protect the island. And with that, my sister died. No! On days 63 to 66, I used the map that Zoe gave me to track down Brett. They won't get away with this. I traveled to the north side of the island again, past the temple, and down into a large cave. There didn't seem to be anybody around, but then I saw a pool of water with a large glowing squid in it. There were a bunch of humans attacking him. Stop hurting innocent creatures! The men jumped in surprise as I attacked them. In only a matter of seconds, they were defeated. Thank you, Ancient One. Of course. I knew you would all be back someday. It was only right that the dinosaurs ruled this island again. Do you know where the amulet is? The squid nodded and pointed down further into the tunnel. I'm afraid the rest of the humans have already started heading down that way, though. How did they know to look for you? Dr. Harland was my friend. When he came to the island, he discovered me and studied me. I told him of the amulet in the cave, but he wasn't interested in it at the time. It wasn't until recently that he wanted to retrieve it. I guess he didn't want a chance you finding it and overpowering him. He ordered his goons to destroy me. I'm so sorry. That must have been heartbreaking. You can't trust those humans. They only want power. They'll do anything to get it. I'll go retrieve it. Good luck to you, friend. And with that, the squid swam further into the pool and disappeared. On days 67 to 70, I went deeper into the cave, which then opened up into a huge underground chasm. This must have been Ignatius's lair. Then I saw Brett and some other goons grabbing a chest from an alcove. That doesn't belong to you. Brett dropped his chest in surprise. He turned and sneered at me. It don't belong to you neither. I charged, ready to strike. The men got out their weapons, ready to shoot. Don't hurt him, just put him to sleep. The doc wants to save him for later. I managed to dodge all the darts and I used all of my strength to swing and hit the humans. I finished off his men and then went to attack him. Brett looked a little uneasy as I got closer, so then he pulled out his dart shooter. I don't want to hurt you, dinosaur, but I will if I have to. He fired his weapon and it wasn't sleeping darts, it was a stun blaster. Ouch! Electricity pulsed through me and I fell down, hard. Just give up. It'll be easier. Then I blacked out. On day 71 to 74, I woke up. My bones and body aching. Then I remembered. The chest. I looked in the alcove and it wasn't there. Shoot. Brett must have taken it while I was out. I felt awful as I made my way out of the cave and up into the jungle again. It was super slow going to get back home, but eventually I made it. On day 75 to 78, I entered the base. I was so exhausted and just wanted to be alone, but my friends came running up to me. Zozo, you're okay. We were asleep, and when we woke up, you were gone. Where's Zoe? 
I told them all about what happened, and they stood in shock. We are so sorry, Zozo. Zoe was a really good friend. I felt awful. I told them I needed to rest, and I went into my house for a little while. It wasn't until long until I heard screaming and shouting. I hurried to run outside, only to find Brett in the base, trying to shoot my friends again. What are you doing here? I need your blood, dinosaur. Give it to me. Ew, gross. No. I roared at Brett, causing him to fly backwards into the wall. I smacked him with my tail and sword, easily defeating him. I then felt a surge of power, and I leveled up into a full-size T-Rex. My roar could demolish anything, and I had tons of hearts. What did he mean he needed your blood? I have no idea, but that was definitely creepy. I looked and saw that Brett had dropped some things. I was hoping it was the amulet, but it was just a key card and a painting. Huh? The painting had some glyphs of humans shooting a dinosaur with a dart shooter and then growing to be huge. Have you seen anything like this? No, it just looks like something the old humans must have left. They probably just thought that defeating a dinosaur would grant them power. I guess Brett thought so too. Probably why he came back to hurt me. Creepy. I looked at the key card a little bit more closely. It had the park symbol on it and a label saying Site B. Huh? What is Site B? The park is Site B. Site A is the abandoned site down the hill. There's two? Yeah, Site A was abandoned because it was too small. Now it's just storage. There must be something important in there if Brett has a key card to it. Must be. On day 79 to 84, I traveled to Site A to go exploring. I was hoping the key card for Site B would work here too. As I approached the front gate, I took out the key card, put it in the key card scanner, and the gate clicked open. Nice! I followed the path and arrived at the main building that rose through the jungle, high into the sky. I slowly went inside the building and saw lots of boxes and cobwebs. The place looked like a mess. This place has been completely abandoned. I explored the building and saw an interesting roller coaster through the window. It goes straight through a dinosaur skeleton exhibit. What in the world was happening in this place? All of a sudden, I heard a noise from a back room. I approached and looked through the window, only to see an alligator looking through the cabinets. I wonder what she's doing. Then she saw me and charged at the glass. She then opened the door and ran towards me. Uh -oh. I quickly backed up and she snapped her teeth at me. What are you doing here? I'm looking to see if there was anything that could help me defeat Dr. Harland here. What are you doing here? The alligator looked at me. She paused for a moment and started speaking slowly. I'm also trying to get to Dr. Harland. He's been running tests on my family in order to make new dinosaurs. I need to rescue him. We can work together. Have you found anything useful here? Uh, yeah, there's some sort of weapon downstairs, but it's too heavy for me to carry. Maybe you can carry it. I started to go down the stairs toward the control room. As I was about to enter, I felt something push me down the stairs. It was the alligator. Hey, what was that for? You aren't supposed to be here, dinosaur. You've been extinct for years, and now you just expect to rule the whole island? The alligators are the real predators here. She snapped her teeth at me and almost got me. Hey, I'm just trying to survive here. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. She ignored me and kept snapping her teeth. I backed up and then used my roar to push her back. I hit her a couple more times, and then after only a minute, she was gone. I wonder if there was anything down here or if she was just lying. I looked around the room, and sure enough, it was mostly just trash. Then I noticed a trap door. I was too big to go all the way down, but I did notice some diamonds and other materials. Wow. But, but they were out of reach. I looked around, and there were a few more diamonds just laying in the corner of the room. Yes. These will definitely come in handy. I grabbed them and headed back to the base. I would definitely need some help scouting out the rest of the secret room. On days 85 to 89, I went back to chat with my friends about what I had found. Wow, I knew that the alligators on the island were super territorial, but that's just crazy. What weirdos. I know, right? But would one of you come with me back to the room? Can't fit down there, but I would like to see if there is anything else of value. Yeah, sure. Crew and I headed back to side A, and he checked out the secret room. He came up in a few minutes, super excited. There's a tunnel, and it looks like it leads into the site B park. This was great news. Now I just needed to figure out a way to fit down there. Crew explored some more and said there was a bigger tunnel opening near the river. That's perfect. I'll go in that way once I'm ready. 
On days 90 to 94, the monkey gave me the diamonds, and I used them to craft myself some better weapons. I didn't really have enough diamonds to make armor that would fit me, so I just made weaker diamond armor with a few chunks missing from the armor pieces. It would be enough to cover my weak spots. Yes. I tried it all on, and I actually felt really cool. Not only am I a strong dinosaur with superpowers, I now also have some protection. I knew that I was one step closer to defeating Dr. Harland and freeing all the dinosaurs. Yes. On days 95 to 97, I finished the statue. It is in honor of Zoe. As I looked up at the finished statue, I felt a sense of hope and strength. I knew that I would get the amulet and fulfill my destiny. On day 98, I said goodbye to all my friends before heading out. Take care, you guys. I'll be back. I promise. They cheered me on as I left the base and headed out to the park. On the way there, I noticed a plane overhead, and it was dragging a sign in the sky. Subscribe? Hey, that sounds like a good idea. You should do that so you can follow along on some of our other adventures. On day 99, I went to the river where the tunnel opening was. I broke the bars and headed inside toward the park. It was dark for a little while, but then I started to see light. The tunnel led to an enclosure with all kinds of other dinosaurs. I approached the gate and roared to break it open. Whoa, it's the T-Rex. They all gathered around me. Are you gonna free us? Yes, this tunnel leads to the outside world. I'll go open up all the other enclosures so that we can all be free. The dinosaurs whooped in delight, and then a bunch of darts started flying. The humans came out of nowhere and started shooting at us. Uh -oh. Run, you'll be safe. They all started running into the tunnels as I roared at the humans. I trudged through the park, defeating the guards easily. I continued to the other side of the park. On day 100, I was loose in Jurassic Park. There were a bunch of humans running around in panic. I tried not to step on them. I just wanted to find Dr. Harland. Then out of nowhere came a bunch of humans with weapons. They shot, but I dodged and roared and swung my tail at them, sending them flying in different directions. They quickly ran away, and I continued through the park to the big building in the center. I smashed through the doors, and sitting on a pedestal was the amulet of Ignatius. I went to grab it, but I felt a dart hit me. I flipped around and saw Dr. Harland with a large shooter. Come quietly, and I won't hurt you. No! I grabbed the amulet and felt a huge surge of power. I turned into a giant T-Rex with massive teeth and a mighty tail. So be it. Dr. Harlan backed up into the lab and closed the door. I heard some whirring, and then he appeared in a large robotic suit. I didn't want to hurt you, but you have ruined my park. You are a liability now. He shot at me with some tough shooters, but they didn't hurt me as much since I was so powerful. Yes. However, he soon started throwing bombs at me, which were not so easy to avoid. Uh -oh. We exchanged blows, and I almost thought that Dr. Harland was about to end me. Ah, that hurt! Ha! I dodged that one. You will not take me down that easily. Take that! Ah, you dirty lizard! That hurts! But I was also doing some damage. I could tell some of my roars were hurting his mech because sparks started flying. Finally, his mech started smoking. Now I was doing some real damage. Then I used my sonic roar and sent Dr. Harlan flying. The suit crumbled into pieces and Dr. Harlan was finally defeated. I made my way throughout the rest of the park, releasing all the dinosaurs back into the wild. They all seemed super happy. Once we all reached my base, I saw my friends cheering for me. Life was back to the way it should be.